究極の静かさと安全性オンロードオフロード世界中で活躍するケンダその信頼を支える静音性安定性と対摩耗性世界が認めた技術と信頼を街乗りでは高品質と納得の価格タイヤのポテンシャルをあなたにケンダ What's up, guys? It's Freddy Gospel, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban. Japan. Breed. Had a brand new bed again, all the way through, just throws a. Of the early transfers. の世界そこでこそ磨かれる本物があるクスコ伝統と革新小倉クラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチ小倉レーシングクラッチ ORC
G-SHOCK プレゼンツフォームナードルトジャパン開幕戦ここ鈴鹿ツインサーキットよりお届けしてまいりますとってもいい天気に恵まれています今シーズンの開幕戦いや昨日予選行われたんですがね、えー、毎年に、えー、さらに輪をかけたようなね迫力のあるそんな予選を見せてくれましたさあいよいよですね今日は決勝日ということでこの後トーナメントいよいよ始まっていくわけですが今ね先ほどまでこの場内にもエンジンのそのサウンドがこだましていたわけなんですけどもねそのトーナメント前の練習走行が行われているところですその前に皆様には、えー、素敵な素敵なこんなコンテンツから始めていきたいと思いますギャルオンステージ拍手ですよここはお願いしますあ,ありがとうございます、えー、ということでねまずはね、えー、手前味噌でありますがこのモーターゲームスを盛り上げてくれる彼女たちをご紹介しましょうどうぞこんにちははいこんにちは手前味噌って聞こえましたいいん下げておく下げておくねこれからお客様出てくるんですからよろしくお願いしますそれでは自家紹介お願いしますはいモーターゲームスガール部2年目となるなりましたはい。2年目のみおりすこと青石みおりですお願いしますはいみおりちゃんですそしてはいモーターゲームスガールズなんと4年目に入ってしまいましたマリリンこと放送マリナですよろしくお願いしますはいマリナちゃんですということでとってもいい天気でね,ねはいこれから決勝トーナメント行われますよはい、はい、楽しみで仕方がない顔してますね楽しみあなたはどんな顔しても大丈夫ですか<笑>どう見ても楽しみどう見ても楽しみだけど<笑>さあその前にですねもう彼女たちが待っているんで、はい、ギャルオンステージ始めていきたいと思いますまずはこのチームからご紹介していきますレイノンタイヤドリフトチームオレンジからささ、えー、ごめんなさいひろきさきちゃんそして照山風花ちゃんそれからアトラスタイヤドリフトチーム福島から佐々木萌えがちゃんと広瀬あゆちゃんですどうぞおはようさあ皆さん大きな早口で迎えてあげてくださいまずはチームオレンジチーム福島から4人のね彼女たちが登場ですそれでははい自己紹介お願いしますねいきます。皆さんこんにちは。チーム福島チームオレンジレースクイーンの佐々木萌香です。照山風花です。広瀬安也です。広瀬咲です。私たちが応援するのはリーノンタイヤドリフトチームオレンジカーナンバー4番小橋正則選手カーナンバー57神田選手。そしてミスター DIY リーノンタイヤオレンジカーナンバー56ミンミン選手。そしてアトラスタイヤドリフトチーム福島カーナンバー311末永直人選手です今年は新型フェアレディ RZ34 でシリーズチャンピオンを目指しますそしてタイヤはもちろんリンロンタイヤの新製品フラッシュヒーローで戦います皆さんチーム福島チームオレンジの応援をよろしくお願いしますはいありがとうございますということでそれではね恒例のえー、フォトセッション撮影会行きましょうかねもう一歩だけここのギリギリまで出れるはいさあ、えー、ファンの皆さんよろしいですかあのー、時間ちょっと切らしてもらいますねごめんなさいねそれでは行きましょうスタートさあということでリンのタイヤドリストチームオレンジからは広瀬さきちゃんと照山風花ちゃんアトラスタイヤードリフトチーム福島からは佐々木萌香ちゃんと広瀬あんゆちゃんです、ね、あのチーム全員ミミ選手、タイランドから来ていますタイランドでの昨年のシリーズのチャンピオンスーパースターそんな、ね、ポジションにいるらしいですよ、ミミ選手それからカンタ選手、小橋選手そしてベテランチームを引っ張る末永選手と4名すべてがです、ね、決勝ラウンド進出というとってもとっても勢いづいている、ね、このチームオレンジチーム福島でございます。はいああのなんか昨日もあの映像の中でいるポーズがあるんだよね。アトラスなそれは何？福島の F。それからリンドンタイの L。それから終わり。<笑><笑>終わりです。<笑>はい、えー、可愛らしいですね。皆さんよろしいですか？写真の方いいですか？それではカウントダウンさせてもらいますよ。五、四、三、二、一。終了ということでリンドンタイヤドリストチームオレンジアトラスタイヤドリストチーム福島の4名ありがとうございました
、ぜひあの、ね、場内で、えー、ステージがあるときありましたら声かけてあげてくださいね、そしてチームの応援、よろしくお願いします。ね、朝からなんか爽やかですね。はい、ね、可愛い,、ね、い,いらしい。これは、何のポーズだったんだろう。ね、アソラスタイヤの A、A、A、はい、そう、で、A、リンのタイヤの L ということですね。はい、さあ、続いて、次のチームをお呼びしましょう。いきますよ。ケノール、パフォーマンスオイルから、カカちゃん、そして、菊池、ゆうちゃんです。どうぞ、大きな拍手を。おはようございます。どうぞ、真ん中のに。さあそれではもうちょっと前に出てくれますかもう少し前はいそのぐらいそれでは自己紹介どうぞ皆さんおはようございますはいおはようございますおはようございますケノールガールのゆっぴこと菊池ですかかです私たちはあのカンナーバー三十三番の笹山選手と八十番の小松選手と百十一番じゅあの日比野選手3号車、今前田選手、530号車、松山選手、61号車、山中選手を応援していますルーマン24などで大活躍しているのケンノールオイルは、レースのために作られたの、100% フランス製のオイルですケノールブースにて特別価格で販売しています、ぜひお立ち寄りくださいぜひ皆さん、私たちと一緒に応援を。よろしくお願いします。はい、ありがとうございます。ではね、撮影の方行きましょうか。じゃあマイクをお預かりしましょうね。で、一歩だけこのギリまでちょっと出てくれる。はいはいはいはい。それでは行きましょう。スタート。<笑>ということで昨日もですね、予選が行われている中で,ですね、このケノールガールの二人がですね、映像に出てくると、なんとケノールのスポンサーで受けているドライバー,ドライバーたちがすべてこう予選を通過していくというね、そんな幸運の女神と。そんなお二人だと思いますよ。はい、とってもスレンダーです。すごい足長いよね。えー、困ったもんだね。困りたくないけど、実際困っちゃう。そんに寄りたくない僕らだね。<笑>離れとこうかな。ね、<笑>ということで本当にね、えー、最後抜群のケノールのお二人なんですけどもね。はい、よろしいですか？よろしいかな？はい。それではカウントダウンいきますよ。五、四、三、二、一。終了ということでケノルパフォーマンスオイルからカカちゃんそして菊池優ちゃんでしたありがとうございました彼女たちもねぜひ場内で嬉しいことがあったらですね声かけてあげてくださいチームの応援よろしくお願いしますさあ続いてご紹介していきましょう入れ替わりさあいきますクスコレーシングのお二人です。高崎クスコちゃん、そして井上水奈ちゃんのお二人です。高崎クスコちゃんズなの。ズなんです。はい、高崎高崎クスコちゃんズなのよ。水奈ちゃんとアリサちゃん。ああそうなんですか。<笑>これちょっと僕にはちょっとわからないんですね。<笑>ここまでがなあのチーム名なのね。そうです。クスコレーシング高崎クスコちゃんまでが,がグ,ループ名グループ名なの、はい、そして井上瑞奈ちゃんと赤木愛沙ちゃんということです失礼いたしました<笑><笑>はいでは、はい、少しだけ前に出ていただいて、えー、ご紹介お願いしますどうぞはい皆さんこんにちは今年度クスコレーシングを応援する高崎クスコちゃんズですはい私が井上瑞奈ですみーちゃんって呼んでください赤木愛沙ですアリって呼んでください。クスコ。あ、クスコは1977年創業の総合アフターパーツメーカーです。本戦あ、ドホーメラドリフトジャパンは四大体制で参戦します。ナンバー 77GR86 草場選手、ナンバー 770GR86 金田選手。ナンバー七百七十一番 GR ヤリスミノワ選手ナンバー七百七十四番 GR スープラ松山選手はい今年度クスコレーシングをの応援を
よろしくお願いしますはいありがとうございますちょうどね今エンジンのサウナかかっちゃったけどもねはい。じゃあ差し撮影の行きましょうもう一歩だけ出て出てくださいそうですはいそれではフォトセッション写真撮影スタートーということでクスコレーシング高崎クスコちゃん,こ,ちゃんここまでがチームそして井上美さんちゃんとあ赤木有沙ちゃんということでまあこのクスコレーシングもね四、えー、名のドライバーがすべて予選を通過をしていますやっぱりレーシングチームですからねそこ力ありますねさすがでございますそんなチームを応援する方お二人ということではいもうなんかみこさんですよね、うんはい、ご利益ありそうですねご利益実際昨日もね、はい、受けましたかさっさとこうね、これから受けたいと思います、はい、ぜひぜひはいさあということでよろしいですかカウントダウンはいいきますよ五、四、三、二、一。終了ということでクスコレーシング高崎クスコちゃんから井上美奈ちゃんそして赤木愛沙ちゃんでしたありがとうございましたぜひね彼女たちにも会場でね、えー、すれ違うとあったら声かけてくださいね応援よろしくお願いしますどうぞさあということで、えー、朝一番短い時間ではありましたけどもねこれ、はい、ライブ配信世界配あなた世界に行く今この映像飛んでるんですよ大丈夫ですかちゃんとメイクしてきましたか。大丈夫。あ、大丈夫ですか。大丈夫。<笑>さあということでこんなね、えー、ステージのコーナーもあります。もちろんこの後はトーナメントが始まっていきますので、はい、ぜひライブ配信の方でもね、えー、皆さんお楽しみに。朝一番のギャルオステージでした。ありがとうございました。した
Round one, here we are about to start the top 32 tandem battles for the 2023 G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan 10th year here at Suzuka Twin Circuit in the Mia Prefecture. Welcome back, everybody uh, on the live stream. Thanks for tuning back in. We did finish our qualify yesterday and we narrowed it down from 40 somewhat cars to the 32 drivers that we have here that is going to go head to head for the top 32 battle. Who's going to make it to the top? It's nice out here. Uh, the weather is great and man, thank you very much. The drift gods out there are giving us a break finally. Nice weather. It's like 22 somewhat uh, Celsius out here. 58 degrees roughly in Fahrenheit. But yeah, beautiful weather carrying over into this top 32 battle. And I'm excited because practice session was pretty intense for some of these drivers. Yes, it is. And let us go ahead and introduce ourselves up here at the judging stand. Um, speaking to you guys uh, on the live stream here. I think. <laughs> yeah, so we're still talking about the weather. So yeah. Uh, as you see, that's the where that third outer zone area is. This is a good twin circuit area. It's like a forest out there. They got like a dirt track in the back over here. Yeah, definitely beautiful area out here. We got two live streams going on. We're about to introduce the Japanese side of the house over there, and then we'll be, be pinging back over here to us. You get to see our faces, you know, Robbie's beautiful face. Harry, Harry, beautiful face. No, but... Uh, here we go right here. We have uh, to the right of me, this is Kenny Harris. He is the commentator um, and he'll be talking to you guys about, you know, filling you guys in what's going on. I'm gonna be one of the commentators as well as one of the judges, I'm Robbie Nishida. Right next to me to the left here, that's Sean Adriano, all the way from the West Coast. Um, he is also helping us out in the Formula Drift USA series. Um, he's gonna be one of the judges. And right here, here you go, this is the Japanese uh, commentator side. We have Tom Saiba uh, to the left. Oh, I'm sorry, to the right of the screen, Taniguchi Nobuteru, uh, commentator, and next to him is Yimumura, and he is one of the judges from Formula Drift Japan. So let's check out the top five here today. <laughs> Sitting in fifth pace right here. Side in Japan, side one's higher right here, 555, you feel Falso going down. I think he feels uh, Falso's one was a very dynamic and great one. This is exactly what he wanted. It's a veteran guy in the brand new Corner G, uh, G35, whatever you want to call it. It's a Yamino car number 111. Got the brand new car from Good Ride. A clean solo run, and I know he was one of the top qualifiers a few years ago at this event. And next up right here, sitting third, he tied, but unfortunately, sitting in the third place, he's still racing. Number 77, Yusuke Kusaka got an 89 on his second qualifier run, tying with the second qualifier. I think he had a great uh, line. But if he can smooth and everything out, uh, that would be a lot higher than where he's at at third. Right here, Paul, on second. This is Young Driver. He's still racing. 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 This man right here, champ from last year, sitting in a Cusco car this year, the A90 Supra. He got 774. Hoku Matsuyama, that was his first qualified run, got a 91 point run on that. And he said he drove this car like the day before yesterday or something for the first time. And very qualified. Let's go ahead and see the in cam right here in his footwork in this GR Supra that he just started driving. There you go. There's gas and clutch and brake right here. Dab of beat right there. Good speed control. I think there's a, a good balance of まずはやっぱり新しいものチームと新しい車でえっと第一戦の感想を優勝することができてすごいあのホッとしてますし嬉しいです。一本目。ま、ポイントを抑えるところを抑えて、え、ま、思いっきり走るっていう感じじゃなかったんですけども、その、ま、要所要所を抑えたところを評価していただいて、え、結果につなげることができてよかったです。今日クスコレーシングがワンツースリ
So he said he was glad to be able to land that score on the first one. He said he did have to kind of uh, hold himself down uh, to do a clean run, and he was happy that uh, we were able to see that in him, where he made a very clean run for his first run. He knows that the first, uh, the top three drivers are all Cusco drivers that uh, qualified uh, from yesterday's qualified. So he said he would love to be on the podium with the fellow drivers today here um, at Suzuka Twin. Exactly, things are looking good for him. Looks like our first car's warming up their tires. We've got a few minutes here. But keep in mind, I'm checking y'all out on the chat. So tune in to us, tell us what's going on. Tell us where you're viewing in from, but appreciate y'all out there for tuning in with us live here at Suzuka Twin Circuit for round one. Man, it's so nice here. I love, I just love it. I mean, it's the first round of the season. It's a season opener. All the drivers are a little, you know, nervous maybe, and they're a little timid, but this is where they're gonna kind of explode and show us their skills um, here at the top 32. Exactly, and also we have drivers from all over the world coming back out with us, all of them qualifying into the top 32, so I'm excited to see how they're gonna perform here with the rest of the drivers that have been here all through COVID and everything. The mix up of uh, new cars and new drivers and old drivers and, you know, veterans and young drivers, uh, this is like the melting pot right now of drifting, and we are here in the mecca of drifting in Japan. Um, this is going to be an exciting one, so don't go anywhere, guys. We are about to kick off the top 32. You can see the Cusco girls here cheering on their driver next to uh, them at the start line. Uh, as you have uh, the lineup right here to the left of the screen, it's car number 774 qualifying first from yesterday. This is Cusco Racing A90 Super driven by Hokuto Matsuyama. And going against him is going to be number 75, Koji Nagase. Was in a JZX100 last year, but is debuting this new car, 2GR Lexus IS350C. And uh -oh. here they are. Looks like Nagase, not sure what happened. He shut down. But Matsuyama doing his thing. Oh, dipping a tire right there through that outer zone, too. We'll have to find out what is going on because that is not looking good for Nagase if he had to shut down right there through the chicane. So we'll see here. Robbie's getting a little bit of word on what's going on with the ground. On everything that's going on down on the ground in the pitch. There you are. Three play of Matsuyama's run. Not too bad for a good run. Like I said, how did you get the track into that zone? And there's a bird's eye view. Come into that. There you go. Real deep. Dipping two tires there in outer zone two. Losing him into that outer zone three in the touch and go. But we'll have to see here. The tow rig is out there hooking up to him. I mean, uh, as the you know, number one qualifier too, uh, watching Matsuyama's run, I mean that would have been a pretty pretty uh, that would have been a pretty good uh, lead run. Uh, where that could have been uh, a, a, a chance for Nagase to do a very good chase behind it because we always talk about uh, having to have a good lead run to have a good tandem. Yeah, but this is not looking good. Nagase hasn't had really any issues with the car all weekend. And right here, when things really matter, um, things aren't working good for him. Hey, that's that's racing. Uh, the car decides to do things uh, when it really matters. And but it yeah. happens to all of us all the time. But I think when uh, some people, I think it's kind of funny when people are superstitious where it's like, oh man, this car does this. And it's like, no, uh, it technically is, you know, a car is a piece of uh, science and technology. So it doesn't really, I, I, I'm more of a believer in where you know if something happens there's always a reason he's a realist. behind it yeah i mean there you go you know if the tire blows up it's not just it happened to happen it you know there's something that leads up to it you know true that but we'll see here like i said it's got a 2gr under the hood twin turbo beautiful build by team kazama and power vehicles but we'll have to get word on what exactly happened if it was engine issue drivetrain issues but yeah, I saw earlier on the chat where everybody's viewing in, it's all over the world. Scrolling back into the top area. We got Yo, New that, Zealand out there. That Toyota Hilux though. I know, I bet that thing will run through <laughs> anything. I bet you that thing's worth a lot of money now too. You, know? <laughs> you got Indiana, Michigan, Kentucky, Ohio. 
Some of my Texas boys are out there watching. Hey, we got the time. My wife, I'm going to give her a shout out. Thanks for letting me come out here in the last three years. Come out here to um, be part of this Formula Drift Japan family. And uh, huge thanks also to you fans out there giving good comments. And then coming out here, we got to meet a few of the fans from Australia. So, yeah, that was awesome to see them. Yeah, I mean, and also, you know, uh, all the drivers that are out here from all over the world and also the Japanese drivers that, you know, this is the home base for them. But, you know, uh, good hustle, getting their team and car ready. You know, it looks like the venue is getting bigger and bigger. Um, and all the people that are out here that are watching, uh, thank you to us. And also shout out to the Formula Drift USA um, fam out there. And we have one of the guys out here, Sean Adriano. Thank you for traveling this, uh, what is it like, you live about 10 minutes away? <laughs> no, so flying all the way into here, you know, because uh, the older I get, you know, the more I travel and I start to realize how that uh, takes a toll on you because uh, it's very, very tiring to having to come. and uh, Exactly. And I got to say, we got to say congratulations to the Formula of U.S. 20 years. That's huge. That's a huge uh, benchmark right there. We're hitting 10 years, so it's big for us this year. I'm excited to see what the rest of the season is going to do for us. And yeah, there you uh, are. Who wants to see Kenny uh, at one of the rounds in the U.S.? Oh, no, you don't. If you do, let me know. I'll try to make it happen. <laughs> I, I ain't buying you no plane ticket, though. Oh, you see, that's what you got to make it. Yeah, well, it looks like these two drivers are ready to go. We were just talking about our international drivers. On the right side, you got number 123, Mad Mike Wadette, coming all the way from New Zealand. Dude, that's like a four-rotor twin turbo, uh, maxing out what a rotary can do. I know there's, you know, five rotor, six rotor, whatever, but then this is uh, one of the competition. This is probably the biggest rotary engine that's in the competition in any of the drifting scene. Versus we got the two JZ pack, the JZX100 driven by Tomoki Tanaka, wild driver. Car looks great. I love delivery on this car. Let's see who's gonna come on top here. All right, here's the run. Oh, oh there you go. It's looks a, like we have a pylon touch most likely. And nobody's made a t-shirt yet, but it's cool. Robbie's eventually going to get there. I'm not. I don't even make my own shirts. Then again, we'll see because his 8.6 still isn't put together. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Maybe that's we'll right. see a video of it getting done. You know, I'm trying to expect. I hope it gets done hey, before hey, I leave. I, I'm a typical car guy. That's true. Right? Too a many typical, projects. A typical car guy just has a long wish list and dreams. You know, you dream big and you have all these things like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And a lot of the guys don't get it done. But it's okay. It's okay. I'm sure you have it at least. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's my money. <laughs> I can spend it however I want. But these guys here, um, Matt Mike Woodette is driving the TCP Magic car, and I believe that Tanaka, this is his own car, and he's kind of a privateer. Uh, he's a sponsored driver uh, with his own team. So, um, you know, Mike is always getting into so many different cars. You know, he's supposed to be doing Pike Speak this year too. And now let's see. Here we are. We're getting a run right now in the books. Mike in the chase position, coming around here. Tanaka throwing down a pretty solid lead run right there. Mike inching up on his corner panel, coming into this touch and go. Transitioning back around into this outer zone four. Man, Mike was just hovering with that proximity the whole way throughout that track. Yeah, so I'd have to say, you know, the pace of these cars are probably a lot different and the grip level might be a little different. But right here, Tanaka uh, seems like he's doing a good job as a lead car with good angle and trying to take the car away to the outside area. And uh, Matt Mike with it, giving him chase, slightly on a smaller line, but he is really, really close. He's uh, not giving him any in inches away. Right there, I don't like the way Tanaka pretty much came to a halt at the outside zone four. That's going to be put on the lead car. But let's go ahead and check out this. Right here, we got the, oh, the, the drone took off after uh, they initiated right here. But look at this uh, proximity. Mad Mike Boudet trying to get closer and closer uh, to Tanaka's car. So pressuring the lead car, nice way to match the angle then right there. A big stall from the lead car at the outside zone four, but it looks like the chase car uh, was able to deal with uh, the mistake that the lead car did. But overall, I think that was a very great run by both of the drivers. Now the tables are going to be turned. Mad Mike's going to be in the lead this time, while Tanaka is going to be in the chase. 
Well, so I think, like uh, Mike was talking, you know, he hasn't been in a competition for a good amount of years because of the whole COVID and the traveling restrictions by, uh, you know, all these countries. Yeah, he joined us once last year at Ebisu, but he says he's going to do a full season with us this year, and I'm very excited for him and his program. Yeah, and Tanaka, you know, he's uh, one of those exciting drivers to see because uh, sometimes he goes a little bit too overboard, and uh, the lead run that I saw right now looks like he was able to keep it uh, within the pace he was wanting to keep it he didn't go overboard so that was a really clean run by uh, both the drivers so we're waiting to see if they're going to get started here soon in the meantime i saw in the chat the little blurb somebody said hey at least robbie's not clicking his pen for them to remember that three years ago <laughs> that's dedication to thank you thank you yeah I, i'm actually trying not to touch the pen until i write something i hear clicking but it was sean over there i think yeah. that now we got the new uh, clicker <laughs> over here <laughs> So, looks like they're ready to go. Mad Mike gonna be in the lead. Tanaka in the chase. All right, sorry for the wait, guys. We're about to start this uh, second run uh, after these two drivers switch places. Now it's gonna be Mike to get Mike to get Tanaka's got a really close that gap. It looks like a gap that he created right there early on. He's got a close in here from Arizona 2, taking a shorter line. Mike filling the zone real deep in that Arizona 3. Oh, Tanaka not able to save himself early on from the jump. Had a gap. Oh, oh, at the end. Oh, oh no. Unexpected happen right there. Let's check this replay out. Everything was looking good all the way through. There's a touch and go transitioning back around into this outer zone four and just over rotating right there through the finish. And like Robbie says, they have to leave the course in drift through the finish line. Here's the overview. Just over rotating there. So we'll see, judges are checking everything out. They got a replay camera going on, so they're making sure to check in all the replays of the lead to lead, chase to chase. All right, so I think uh, now we have to default to look at the first run who did a better job, but it's really, really hard to tell to see who compare the lead and the chase in one run because Tanaka incompleted as the chase car when he was chasing. Matt Mike with it, incompleting right at the finish line. It looked like he had it in the bag, but uh, yeah. Uh, we're gonna have to make a call for this. We'll see here. Waiting for the official vote. I think I know what's gonna happen, but I'm not gonna tell you yet. I think it's because you're a third of it. All right, <laughs> there we are right here. We're getting a one more time. Adriano with a one more time, and there we are. We're going to see a one more time battle between these two drivers. And uh, explaining that part, it's really hard to tell who's... They both did a good job. I think Tanaka did a good job as a lead. Small of a mistake at the outside zone four. Uh, Matt Mike Widet giving him good pressure. I think it was good. I think Imamura said he was leaning a little towards uh, Mike um, to make the call, but to make it fair, the lead car did what he had to do to give a good fair chase. Uh, we're gonna have to see this one more time. Yeah, he almost had it in the bag, but right there at the end, anything happens and we always see it right at the end or whenever they change positions. This is why I love drifting. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet, I bet I bet, the drivers don't, but. It looks like a lot of y'all out there made the call, that final call there. And it looks like our first battle that happened between Matsuyama and Nagase. They're lining up. Robbie's getting more word on All right, so um, I think uh, we're having uh, technical difficulties right now on the streaming portion of it, so it's going to take him a few minutes. So let us go ahead and fill you in on what's going on right here. Uh, other than the drifting part of it, let's go ahead and uh, chat about something 
I don't know, R related, but they don't want to hear you. This is it. Now it's the Robbie and Kenny podcast. No, so let me let me get uh, Sean on the mic right here and uh, see what he wants to say. How's it going, Sean? How has your time been here between qualified voting and then coming out here and seeing the first few battles? Uh, it's been good. Practice looks like it's been uh, pretty good for Tandem. Yeah, they they definitely stepped up from, from qualifying yesterday. So pretty happy. Yeah, and I gotta say, I liked your aggressive approach to your judging because a lot of them weren't used to that. You were very strict, but you stuck to your guns. Yeah, so I mean, basically, you know, whatever you start out with, you know, whatever scale or baseline you start out with, you can't change that halfway through qualifying. So it did start out a little stricter than maybe it could have, but I didn't want to change that halfway through, and then basically everybody that went before, it would make their runs, you know, void, basically. Exactly, and so how bad do you want to come out here and compete now? Uh, I mean, I do miss competing, but, you know, it's not the end of the world. Exactly. It's, it was fun, but, yeah, this is, this is also pretty fun. So. Exactly. I'm glad that you're out here. You came out here last year for Fuji, got it, kind of got to scope it out and check it out, and now yep. you're out here actually judging, uh, putting your piece of the puzzle part of our team. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely uh, happy to be out here. It's a pretty cool experience. I think I've... Uh, Almost had pretty much every every job in FD or related to drifting, so that's that's been pretty cool. Exactly, and that's the dynamic that you know we want to bring here to Formula Drift Japan. You know the different stuff you get to see in the U.S. and you're bringing it here, and then your knowledge, you know, being the judge and all, you get to help out and make it happen. Yeah, so it's been a pretty good experience. Too. Yeah, happy to be here. So, Ray, one to ten, what do you like most about here? The food. The nature, or and, you know, sites, or the cars. <laughs> I mean, I'd say all the above. Exactly. Yeah, the food's good. All the sites are good. I mean, last uh, I was just just out here a couple weeks ago, and actually for the first time was able to do some sightseeing. So that that was that was dope. A lot of cool places to see out here. Yeah, obviously, different foods in different cities are, are good, and then uh, the cars, man. You just can't get a lot of these in the states. I think the most impressive thing out here is the vans. The yeah, bands, that, that Alfred yes. that we were in, man, that, that was like business class in an airplane or something. Exactly, that's that's next level. Hopefully we'll see the U.S. You know, incorporate some of these lounging chair uh, Alfreds oh, and stuff dude. like that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, seems, seems a little out of the budget, maybe. Exactly. I'm checking out the <laughs> chat now. I see you guys are talking about the volume. I know we had issues yesterday. Robbie's trying to get that a little figured out, tuned in. Uh, tuned out so you guys can check us out and hear us even though I don't know if you guys want to actually hear us or not but hey I do appreciate it you guys viewing chiming in giving us on what's going on in the live stream itself but yeah overall Adrian uh Sean you got anything else for these guys oh I mean yeah we're gonna try and get this fixed up and uh get the competition going so Yeah, Robbie's just filling uh, Kenny on, on, on what's going to happen. All right, sounds like uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to back to the Matsuyama Nagase situation. Looks like we're doing a buy run. Matsuyama's going to do his buy run, show us that his car is ready to go for his next tandem battle. And unfortunately, Nagase's car is getting knocked out. Kind of self inflicted. We'll have to try to find out more on what was going on with his car. Tune y'all in for that. Oh, there we go. We just got the word from our tech guys on the ground. He blew his diff up. All right, I'm going to pass the uh, mic back over to Robbie. Thanks again, Sean. Hey, guys, I'm back. I'm Robbie Nishida. I'm going to go ahead and carry on the energy that Sean brought to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> if Robbie was like I'm that, just I, I just I, have a bad I just headache, spectate. Though. How you slept the majority of the I know I, I don't know what happened, but I think it's just aging. So like we said, you know, uh, unfortunate for Nagase debuting the brand new IS Coupe build. Uh, well, not a brand new car, but a brand new car for the series and for himself. Uh, blew up the diff and uh, could not fix his vehicle. I think it was, maybe it was a competition timeout or maybe uh, lack of spare parts, I'm not sure. But uh, Hokuto Matsuyama is going to go ahead and do his buy run. He's going to be able to do, uh, he's going to be moving on to the top 16. He got a free ticket to top 16 because of mechanical failures of Nagase. Yes, and this is the number one qualifier. He got a 91 on his first qualifier run. Tried to come out with some flair on his second, but unfortunately incompleted, but man, 
coming out as the last driver onto the track, you know, getting and to see the field, throwing down that run, it was pretty awesome to see. Yeah, and you know, I mean, talking about the track, you know, we have the boxes uh, painted for us, for you guys, for the spectators, be able to see, um, you know, the limits of the zones. But I've heard, you know, some of the drivers were like, oh, you know, they couldn't see the line because a lot of the cars were run over and it's all black. But no excuses because, like you said earlier, Mat Matsuyama got a 91, and he, he was the last, the last driver, driver yeah. of 40-something. So there was no uh, marking for him to see, but he had muscle memory. Spatial had, awareness, all that, yeah. Yeah, he knew what, what he had to do. So uh, I think for the drivers that are still looking down at the box, looking for your limits, you're a little behind. And that's my opinion. Well, right there, you just saw the run. That's going to be the first driver moving on to the top 16. Hokuto Matsuyama in the Cusco Racing A90 Supra. And for those of you uh, who are not familiar, we are uh, going to run our top 32 all the way to the end. After that, we're going to be taking a short break, getting into the top 16. And uh, from the top 16, we're going to be on one uh, one move, one movement, one uh, show where we're not going to go anywhere and we're going to go all the way to the finals where we will see who the winner here is going to be for the first round of the 10th season of Formula Drift Japan. Yes, and with that being said, make sure you join us right when it starts because we'll be doing the driver's intro and then rolling into battles to see who's going to be the number one here at round one of the 2023 G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan event. Yeah, and you know, we've been working on uh, telling some of the Japanese drivers to do a little bit more on social media. And you know how Japanese people are just in general, you know, very uh, bashful, very, you know, timid on, you know, trying to push themselves out. So it's really hard to get information on their cars and what kind of people they are. But hopefully we can do a good job introducing to you guys. Uh, maybe you guys could become a fan of some of these drivers. Uh, there's a lot of different cars out here, a lot of different drivers. And uh, some of these driving styles might, you know, you might be a big fan of that, so. So we'll see you're waiting for our... Okay, we're gonna actually go back to the one more time uh, run with uh, Ma'am Mike Wadette and uh, with uh, Tomoki Tanaka. Tomoki Tanaka. All right, there you go. You, see, you can see Tanaka getting his tires warmed up. On the right side of the burnout box, we have a left side for Mad Mike with Dead. We're gonna see this one more time battle. Mad Mike had it in the bag, but unfortunately lost it right after outer zone four through the finish over rotating. So I'm not sure who the lucky one is here because they both got an incomplete. Uh, Tanaka, early on in the chase, he pretty much incompleted after outside zone three. And I thought, oh, you know, that's going to be an easy call for us because uh, right when Mad Mike uh, Wadette passed the finish line, he did over-rotate. So, uh, you know what, let's go ahead and start over everything. You know, let's forget about the first two battles that we have because we didn't really see one yet. This is going to be it. Let's go ahead and say this is the beginning of our top 16, or top 32, I'm sorry. Here we are, Tomoki Tanaka in the lead, Mad Mike Wadette in the chase. Approaching this three or outer zone one right here. Nice shot by Tanaka. And like before, Mad Mike coming in right here, closing that proximity gap on him through outer zone three. Tanaka just doing what he did before on his first lead run. Ooh. And once again, right there at the finish, yeah, Tanaka, Tanaka. I mean, this is almost like a rerun of what we just saw earlier. Uh, Tanaka's doing a good job as a lead car, but Matt Mike with it, keeping the pressure on the driver, having to surge a little bit right here at the outside zone three, but keeps a good distance, staying where he's supposed to be, mimicking the line that the lead car is doing. This is a good job by both the drivers, but right here, 
Same as earlier, Tanaka had to come to a slight halt at the outside zone four. Right there, looking at the drone footage, it doesn't look like Tanaka feels the outside zone two as well as he's supposed to, but uh, the chase car drive Chase car, man, Mike Widet is keeping the pressure on, getting really close right there, staying on the same line the lead car is uh, running. So I honestly think this might be a little bit of a better job by uh, uh, Matt Mike from comparing it to the last chase he did. Yeah, and he's definitely doing the definition of tandem battles, keeping that pressure on that lead car. And you can see right there through the drone footage, but looks like we are ready to go. Mad Mike is gonna be in the lead this time while we have Tanaka in the chase. All right, so this is like, a, uh, they both have practice after after uh, uh, one run. They both got to drive with each other, so now they know more, a little more about each other, but let's see if that's gonna be enough to mix things up here, let's see. And it looks like Tanaka early on closed that proximity a little bit more through that outer zone one. Real deep in that zone for Mad Mike. Coming back around, look at that, Tanaka just diving in, but oh, maybe made a deep mistake there through that outer zone three in that chase position. Here's that solid finish right there, able to hold on through the finish, oh, but Tanaka unable to hold on into that outer zone four to the finish. Tanaka incompleted twice. But I'd have to say he did a good job getting closer uh, after the outside zone two. It looked like Matt Mike Burdett got a little too wide at outside zone two, dropping the tire. But right here, when he does uh, transition to the outside zone three, it looks like uh, Tanaka could not carry enough angle. And with or without that, right here at the finish, at the outside zone four, once again, Tanaka goes off track, spins out. Yeah, overshooting outer zone four after the touch and go. Because after the touch and go, they're full throttle all the way through. And that got to hang right back on. Ima Murr is going to go right to Mad Mike. There you are right there. Mad Mike Wade is going to move on to the top 16. All right, so for the top 16 first battle, it's already here. The names are on the... Uh, uh, the latter, it's Matsuyama versus Mad Mike. They're both Toyo drivers. And it's going to be interesting. And two ex-champions, too. Yes, they are. Damn, we're, we're going to be able to see a champion champion to champion run at top 16. That's kind of cool. And look at these two new cars in the series this year. Ooh. You got Shigaisa a... Sasayama right there in the Lexus RC. Versus car number 21, all the way from the West Coast, LA, California, America. Car number 21. Kenshiro Gushi driving the brand new Lexus IS 500S Sports performance. Yes. It's an all Lexus battle. Exactly, but it's left hand drive coming from the US. Here it is coming around right here. Sasayama, nice initiation to outer zone one. Gushi, oh! Sasayama too hot into that outer zone two. And Ken anticipating that right there. The judges are going to take a look at that at Sasayama's lead run. Yeah, let's see. That was a little bit of a different style dirt drop by Sasayama versus how we saw Man Mike's, where Man Mike was in a good pace with Sasayama right here. Kind of going off towards more towards the end, more deeper on the outside zone, too. And a huge correction by uh, Kengushi chasing, so I don't know if that's going to be. Wait on the lead car. Let's go ahead and see. So judges are checking that out. So just keep in mind for you spectators out there, when they're hitting the dirt, they're already bumped a foot off the track. So there's a one foot buffer that they can hit. And if they're hitting the dirt, they're already past that one foot buffer. So they're real deep into that zone. They're really looking at the replay to make sure that Sasayama didn't DQ himself on that, but it looks like the tables are going to be turning. Ken Gushi's going to be in the lead this time, but while Sasayama is going to be in the chase. So looking at that, it kind of looked like it was both of the cars' fault, where Ken Gushi was a little shallow, too shallow, versus uh, Sasayama going in a little bit too wide. Comes down to this, Ken Gushi filling outer zone one right there. Trying to keep that car sideways, swinging around outer zone three. Sasayama not too bad on that proximity through that outer zone three. Trying to keep it close through this touch and go here. Switching back around into this outer zone four, but looks like Sasayama took a way shorter line into that finish. 
All right, so let's go ahead and dissect this run. Kangushi through one outside zone one. A little bit shallow on the angle and a little small on the line at outside zone two, but does a good job at outside zone three. And looking at Sasayama, keeping the pressure on, not too close, but not too far, keeping it within proximity. A little bit small on the line at the outside zone four as a chase car. Let's go ahead and check this out. Bird's eye view. Feels outside zone two, around the middle. Attacks right there uh, by Sasayama. Attacks at the outside zone three. And a pretty nice run as a, a lead car too, so. We'll see what the final call is here. Sasayama in the lead, dipped two tires in that outer zone two. Kangushi making a huge correction through that outer zone two on his chase run, but did a solid lead run there. Sasayama had his mistakes in his chase, especially in that outer zone four, taking a shorter line into the finish. Just waiting for the judges' call. All right, so now we're putting everything on the table to look at and uh, comparing the mistakes that both of the drivers made. Now, the lead driver has to be uh, where he's supposed to. And we're, you know, we're not looking at replays that are on the live stream. We're looking at replays that we have here right now for ourselves. All right, Imamura is going to go left to Sasayama. And there you are right there. Shiga, he says Sasayama's getting all votes over, moving on to the top 16. Takes down the brand new build, both of the brand new builds, uh, the Lexus battle. Uh, Kangushi is knocked out here by Shigehisa Sasayama in his brand new RC. And uh, I think the biggest was the huge correction that Kangushi made when he was chasing and he pretty much straightened out. All right, there you are. You see the next battle coming up. You're gonna have Koldai Soba Sobagiri going against Yoshitatsu Kaneda. Both GR86s, this GR86 on the left, driven by Sobagiri, has a VR in it, uh, made by the R31 house, Shiba Tire, Team Shiba Tire, or Shiba, Ta Shiba Ta Racing um, on Yokohama. And right here to the right, that's Cusco Racing, obviously with the color. Um, GR86 debuted last year. So, okay, so the Cusco Racing. 86 has already been in the competition with a brand new build by Shibata Racing. Exactly, here we are coming around. Sobagiri showing that outer zone two right there. Koneda trying to keep that oh. close proximity through, but dipping two tires, throwing him offline right there. Disrupting his car and creating a gap right there through the touch and go, but he's tiling it all and losing it right at the finish. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, I got to see because there was a lot of smoke right there, but I think Kaneda pretty much, he he, he uh, got an incomplete at the outside zone three when he went off course and he had to drive straight into the track. Let's go ahead and check it out from this view uh, or a different view that we have. Concentrating on Kaneda, Kaneda then driving into uh, the track from the outside zone three and also trying to play catch up and uh, ends up in the dirt at the outside of outside zone four. Here we go. This is Kodai Sobagiri's cheerleaders. They have their fans uh, with their names cut out right here. That reads Sobagi, Sobagiri Yudai uh, in kanji, Japanese characters right here. The Cusco girls look really uh, sad right now because of the mistake made by Kaneda. Let's see, you can flip that around if uh, Sobagiri's gonna uh, give a good chase to Kaneda's lead. Yes, and anything can happen. We saw that earlier on on our battles. We are talking Sobagiri in the new power plant this year. Amazing job handling that car. Kaneda now has to handle his through this lead right here. Coming around, outer zone one. Oh, real deep into that outer zone one right there. Able to get to that outer zone two. Sobagiri adjusting himself to Kaneda being so deep into those zones. But able to keep that proximity through the touch and go here. Sobagiri coming back around a little bit more shallow through that outer zone four. I'd have to say I'm not a big fan of the way Sobagiri was giving chase. He was very shallow on the lines, uh, especially here. Kaneda going a little bit way too wide everywhere. Sobagiri, small on the outside zone two line, but does match the line here where he shouldn't be because they're both going off course. 
very big risk. But right here after the transition, after the touch and go, Sobagiri looks like he does the transition a little too early where he's on a smaller line outside zone four. But um, I really doubt that it's going to be uh, big enough to flip it around because uh, the major mistake that Kaneda made uh, as uh, a chase, chase driver. And there you go, one boat going up, both boats over there, and all three judges. Cold Eye Sobagiri is going to get the win and move on to the top 16. Congratulations uh, to the driver, to Sobakiri, moving on to the top 16. Better luck next time for Kaneda, um, uh, but good hustle for the weekend. I like the way you say it. You're like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> they caught me off guard on that when they were presenting it. Uh, there was no delay. They jumped right back into it, just like we're going to jump back into these tandem battles here against these two drivers, number 111, Tetsuya Hibino in the 400Z going against number 30, Takumi Sato, a Team Kazama with Power Vehicles JZX100. Hibino this year with Good Ride Motorsports. New build for him, new car for him, and we're gonna see how he's gonna do. And uh, the young driver Takumi Sato moving up from the FDJ2 series last year and uh, finishing the Formula of Japan season last year. Um, he had a year to experience the series and now he is back for his second full year of FDJ. Yes, and uh, the full. Hibino's car was debuted at Tokyo Auto Salon, so definitely a cool car. Interesting kid on it, swinging around here through the 3 2 1 in the outer zone 4. Very oh, oh, he's training oh, oh, right oh, there. Oh. Looks like correcting himself, leaving outer zone 1 by Hibino. Uh oh. And then real deep to that outer zone 2. Sato very confused on what to do, on how aggressive he needs to be. Not the best lead run we've seen. Yeah, because he incompleted. Um, a bad lead right here. Everything looked great till here, but it looked like he couldn't get back on throttle as soon enough. The front started to push. He steered around and pretty much understeered and incomplete at the outside zone too. Now, Sato, also as a chase driver, we would love to see him a little bit more closer, a little bit too far, but I'm not gonna say that's an inactive chase by Sato. Yeah, there you go. Two tires out there in outer zone three. But now we're gonna see how it's gonna be when the tables are turned here while Takumi Sato is gonna be in the lead and Tetsuya Hibino is gonna be in the chase this time. And you know, I always have to, I, I can't say this enough to the Japanese drivers and Japanese drifting in general. Yes, everybody wants grip. It's nice to have grip, but I don't want it to be a tire grip contest where everybody just wants to grip up. We want to see cars sideways. We want to see drifting, not yeah. driving straight or shallow. You know? Exactly, and, hitting the zones. Yeah, so I think it looked like, uh, I'm not sure if it was bad timing for Hibino trying to get on throttle and he was a little too late or the cars gripped up a little bit too much. Uh, I'm not sure about that portion of it, but I do want to say that to everybody. Here we go, Hibino's in the chase this time. Sato in the lead, Sato coming into that outer zone one, filling that outer zone beautifully. Looks like Hibino taking a shorter line there through outer zones one and two, bringing it back around to this outer zone three, keeping that close proximity to Sato. Sato doing a nice job filling the zones on the course. Hibino just kind of manipulating the car to keep that close proximity, but not finding himself in all the zones. And you know, that was a beautiful chase and I really, really wish the outcome of the lead driver was a little different because there was a big separation from Sato when he was giving chase. Hibino keeping the pressure throughout the whole track. And I'd have to say Sato's run, uh, not as aggressive as how uh, Hibino is handling it, but he is marking uh, the car. He's marking off, checking off all the outside zones where he's supposed to be at. And uh, as a lead car, that was a very clean run by Sato. And I'd have to say if Sato's lead run was like this at the qualify, I'm pretty sure he, you know, things would have been different for, you know, where he placed in the qualify, but right there, uh, Hibino keeping the pressure. But the big correction that he saw, uh, that we all uh, witnessed out here at outside zone two is gonna be really big. All right, here we go. Ima Mur is gonna go right for Sato. Adriano going right, and there you are. Takumi Sato is gonna get the win and move on to the top 16. So brand new build by uh, the, the Good Ride Racing team with Hibino. 
still going to have to do some tweaking because uh, there are some uh, smaller probably issues where Fabino needs to uh, work with. Uh, and we'll see how far they can go with this car throughout the whole season. Now looking at this lineup, what am I seeing here? We're in Japan and we see BMWs going against each other. This is it. Uh, this is the BMW battle. To the left and the right, we have uh, car number 36. Kazumi Takahashi driving the Shiro Fighter E90. And Akira Manawa going in the Z4 here. BMW battle, it was debuted at Fuji. Coming around, VR against VQ. Coming around, outer zone three. And looks like, oh, Hanawa oh. losing it right there in outer zone three. Given an easy lead run for Takahashi. Wow, that's, that's awesome because I'm in Japan and I see a BMW E92 with a VR in it go against the Z4 with a VQ in it. Both with Nissan V6 power plants, which is already kind of unusual um, because we're not seeing 2Js in any of these and the car being different too. Uh, this is really exciting to see. It's fun. But uh, that was an obvious mistake made by Hanawa as a chase... Uh, driver at the chase position and uh, you know Ta Takashi doing his thing a great lead run we see the kids here waving the flag uh, cheering the drivers on and we also see the uh, pink afro man uh, next to the, the child now we're going to see how these tables are going to turn here and now is going to be in the lead this time we're going against Takahashi Takahashi just has to keep that pressure on him throughout the track. And here he is coming around outer zone one, dialing in through that outer zone two. Hanawa coming back around, being pretty safe on that right there. Takahashi keeping that proximity and pressure on him, getting right back on it through the touch and go, swinging back into this outer zone four. If only Hanawa could have had that as his chase run. Uh, both of the drivers did a great job here. Uh, Hanawa, uh, trying to stay on the outside line as much as possible in Takahashi here. Great job keeping the pressure uh, throughout the track. And, uh, you know, I'd have to say, give Hanawa some time in this vehicle. He's going to be a real threat to all the drivers because maybe this is the first uh, event for them being a brand new car. Uh, actually, it was driven uh, by Takaki from last year in Okayama, but Brand new driver are. in a car. Imamura, Adriana, and Ishida going with Kazumi Takahashi. So Takahashi gets the win and we'll move on to the top 16. Going against Takumi Sato. Yeah, so I'd, I'd want to, I'm, I'm excited to see how Hanawa's going to do for the rest of the season because this is just a start for him. So a uh, great job by the new driver in the series. Uh, losing to the veteran. Um, congrats to Takahashi. Moving on, let's go ahead and see. You see this car on the screen, and also the live chat is blowing up right now with Brazilian flags. Yes, I'm excited to see this Yukio Fausto 555 in the side X Japan with Cylon tires, new livery, same kit, aggressive Liberty Walk kit. We'll see how aggressive his first run's going to be in the lead position while he goes against Kenichi Takashima. Takashima going to be in this new car. Um, he was in a JZX before, uh, but that was a different car uh, from a different team. And now he is driving the Team Kazama with power vehicles, JZX 100 Chaser. Now both the power plants are 2Js. Uh, we don't have any data on how it's going to be in the have I'm just guessing that probably pretty close. Uh, uh, who's going to take it? Take the win here. And look at that, real aggressive from the start by Fausto in the lead position, dipping that tire right at the end, but holding on, swinging back around, and Takashima trying to close that proximity throughout this course. Fausto doing his thing, smoking him out through the touch and go, oh! And taking out some of his body kick right there, swinging back around in this out of zone four. <laughs> at first I was like, is that a tire? Yeah, something uh, came off of uh, the, the, the crazy looking Liberty Walk kit. S15 driven by Fausto, but nice job at the outside zone two. Little wide on outside zone three, but keeping the pressure uh, from behind Takashima, trying to stay within reach, but 
even with that much angle, Fausto looks like he is pulling slightly away from Takashima. Oh yeah, he was full throttle all the way after he came through this outer zone three, and you don't see the smoke, smoke trail stop at all. Here it is right here. Going yeah, through very the touch and go. Yeah, very dynamic and exciting driver. And you know what, sometimes I see uh, Yukio Fausto, he is very uh, exciting to watch. And sometimes he's a little bit too much where he kind of knocks himself out, but this lead run kind of shows how much of an exciting driver he is. Um, and he's showcasing uh, what he knows and what he's good at. Exactly. New year, new Fausto. Let's see how he's going to do in the chase position. But let's see how Takashima's going to do in the lead. Yeah, there you go. That's the piece that fell off um, of uh, Fausto's car. The tech is making sure that the car is going to be okay. Um, you know, probably going to be okay, but we know that the, uh, uh, you know, you can never be too too ready. You want to make sure that, you know, double check, triple check everything to make sure that the car is going to be okay. It may be just a body piece with that but you know, took out a line or, you know, so they're going to checking that. Uh, to make sure they're not dragging anything around on the car. But as you can see, the beautiful brand new livery here, the silent tire livery on uh, Yukio Fausto's car. And uh, I know he redid some of the pieces on the cages. And when we teched the car, the inside was clean, uh, painted really beautifully with this lime green color. Yeah. Uh, it looked like he went through the whole car and uh, renewed a lot of stuff and updated a lot of stuff. Yeah, on his social media, he was showing he did a full breakdown of the car, completely breaking it down and building it back up. Engine was rebuilt also. Got that fuel tech system in there. We'll see how, we're gonna see how he's gonna do. Looks like they're fixing a few things, taping a few things up in the back. Make sure that he's or they're safe taking, to run. They were taking a nap behind the car and the drone caught him. So they're like, oh, drone's here, we gotta go. So here you go, there you go, Kobayashi with his uh, ponytail there. He's the flagger behind, um, monitoring the cars, leaving the start line and we have Kuroda as our starter starting these two off now takashima is going to be leading and driving the jcx he is no that's a familiar chassis though all right here we are takashima not too bad through that zone fausto right there trying to hang on making a little bit of a correction through that outer zone two here bringing it back around through outer zone three nice proximity closing the game right here through the touch and go takashima was real oh. deep right there making a huge correction probably too deep into that touch and go all right i just want to make sure that that was an that was a fausto avoiding the lead car, and it wasn't two individual <laughs> mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here Let's it go is ahead right and see here. right here. After leaving the outside zone three, it looks like Takashima tries to make it out to the touch and go. Oh yeah, that's a uh, that's a huge uh, error caused by the lead car there, Takashima, over rotating, uh, giving a little bit too much angle. Um, but leading up to it, it looked like Taka Takashima was doing a good job as a lead. And it didn't look like uh, Fausto was giving enough chase. He was on a smaller line here too. But right there, look as you that. can see, the rotation and the quick rotation to uh, to angle that Takashima made, leaving the touch and go, is uh, pretty much a huge mistake that uh, may may end up in a loss here. Ima Mur going left, Adriana going left, and Nishida going left. So Yukio Fausto is going to get the win and move on to the top 16 with a new car and a new uh, team right here, Takashima. A good hustle for the weekend, but he is knocked out at top 32. The winner is Fausto, Yukio Fausto, the fan favorite. He is moving on to the top 16. All right, moving on to this next battle coming up. It's going to be number 37, Koichi Yamashita in a new car this year, but he still has a 2J, what he had before in his JZX100, going against Yukio Fausto, or not Yukio, Yuto Komatsu. Sorry, I had that, that on my mind right there. Up. My bad. But he's actually in a different car, a loaner car, because his IS-350, unfortunately, suffered some damage before he came out here. And here they are coming around. Komatsu killing it in this IS-300 in practice. We'll see how he's going to do here in the chase. Dipping two tires through that outer zone two, trying to catch up to Yamashita, but Yamashita doing what he does best in that lead position, filling the zones. Oh! oh. But maybe too much right there through outer zone four. And hey, uh, we've seen this happen last year and everywhere where when you're late, you're trying to play catch up, and that outside zone four comes real close. 
and these guys are trying to get away from each other as much as possible, which is not what we want to see. But Yamashita beaming into outside zone four, then he does lose two tires. Two tires, there you go, but that's not an incomplete, and that's no excuse for Yuta Komatsu to make a spin there. Yeah, very unfortunate. Komatsu came in real way too hot in outer zones two and outer zones four, you saw. Yeah, that dip right there in outer zone two caused him to get a huge gap to Yamashita. It just looks like he was struggling all through the track. We're going to see how Yuta Komatsu is going to do on his lead run this time. So this car right here was debuted in the FDJ2 series last weekend. And like I said, Komatsu, his car suffered some issues literally days before this event. Couldn't get the car out here, but he has new livery on his IS350, expecting to see it next round at Ebisu. But till then, he's gonna make it happen here in the IS300. 2J power plant, roughly 700, a little over 700 horsepower under the hood. Making sure everything's safe on the car because he's gonna be in the lead this time and we don't need anything flying off. So right now, Koichi Yamash is waiting at the line. Yeah, so that's uh, uh, both drivers making mistakes, but let's go ahead and see who made the bigger mistake. I think the chase car made a bigger mistake there um, at the outside zone four because that was an incomplete and the lead car did an incomplete. Exactly, now we're gonna see what's gonna happen here. Anything can happen at this point. Both cars, black and green. Both cars with the 2J. You got a young driver versus a veteran. And you know what? Everybody loves this Alteza base, the IS300 base. And uh, I think I got comments of it because this car is driven by Yuichi Otomo and FDJ2. And a lot of people comment on the car because they love the way it looks. And I don't even know why we don't see more Altezas or IS300 in competition. I really don't. Exactly. Really great cars. It has a very aggressive look to it. It performs very well, but let's see how well it's going to perform for Komatsu here in his lead run. Yamasha trying to close that proximity early on into this outer zone one here. Not too bad filling that zone. Hesitating just a little bit approaching this outer zone three. Real deep in that zone. Yamasha trying to follow suit through that zone. Into that touch and go. A little lighter line right there. But man, Yamasha keeping pressure all through the track. So I think... Uh it always happens at the top 32 lead, but it looks like Komatsu does a good job on his lead. Um, but it looks like he needs to kind of settle the car early so he can get back on throttle as soon as possible because he still seems like he's timid through the track where you see with that tire mark too, you can see where it's like, it's like a stop and go, stop and go, where that's not a smooth run. We want to see the driver lay down, uh, you know, get back on throttle as soon as possible and stay on it, not off and on. Exactly, taken away from the fluidity on that lead run by Komatsu. But we'll see here, looks like there may be an issue right now with Yamashita's car. And here we are, Imamura is gonna go left with Yamashita, Adriana and Nishida going left. So Koichi Yamashita is gonna get the win in his new car. Let's see how he's gonna perform. That was the last slot filled, last battle on the left side of our bracket. Yes, we do have, this is uh, uh, this is gonna be an exciting matchup, but I'm a little worried because Yamashita's car is stopped after the outside. Uh... Oh, he was leaking before he left. Oh, wow. So we'll see here. Yamashita. We'll see here if we're gonna be able, he's gonna be able to get this car ready for battle. But like we were talking about brackets, if you wanna tune into the brackets and follow what we're looking at on our brackets, the bracket link is right there on top of the chat. Check it out, see where we're at. Left side of the bracket has been filled up. Now we are gonna be moving on to the right side of the bracket. Doing a taste test real quick on the fluids. <laughs> like, mm, needs a little more salt. <laughs> yeah, not looking good right there. You got the PA slash Japanese side live stream talking about <laughs> tasting, and then you got us over here. 
Taniguchi over there playing with the camera as well. And there you go, right over there. <laughs> so Yamashita getting out of the car. Uh, he has it shut down because of whatever the leak is. Hopefully there's nothing on the track and I hope that's just uh, fuel, which is not good if it is fuel, but if it's just fuel, you know, it's something that'll evaporate and it's not gonna cause that much of a damage uh, to the track for the chase cars. Cause that's the chase lane where you don't wanna leave and you don't wanna get left behind. Um, I'm having deja vu from last weekend. So last weekend we had the same issue. Mike ended up blowing up uh, his engine on his qualifier run and we shut down for about 40 minutes cleaning up the track. But it looks like it's just right at the start line. They inspected the rest of the track to make sure nothing was leaking. But Robbie's trying to find out right there. You can see the radio man on the ground talking to Robbie right now getting ready to tow the car off the track. Hats off to the crew out here taking care of business. Not only the track crew, but the tech crews out there making sure the cars are in line, inspected and ready. But we'll see here, checking out the replay one more time. This is the lead to lead view, lead to lead chase to chase right here. Yeah, it was fuel leak. I don't know where um, from, but uh, they're gonna have to check the car to make sure that it's not gonna do that again uh, for the top 16 battles, obviously. But uh, this battle's already over. As you see this uh, side-by-side -side view right here, uh, you can see that Yamashita's uh, pressuring Komatsu a little bit more than Komatsu pressuring Yamashita, then right here getting left behind, and uh, right there, Komatsu, uh, yeah, kind of coming in a little bit too hot. And you know what? It's weird as a driver, when you're trying to play catch up, it always feels like, oh, the lead car is doing something to me because you're so focused on trying to get to the lead car. And when the lead car does anything, the chase car reacts bigger uh, than they anticipated because they catch up so fast. Um, and uh, maybe that's something, that's what happened right here where Komatsu probably didn't think of uh, the outside zone four being that, uh, how can I say? Shallow, yeah, yeah. a little bit too hot. Yeah, so he came out a little bit too hot. But yeah, with Kom it just seems like, but with Komatsu in two out of the four zones, he was very hot. Like even outer zone two, he dipped two tires. And like I was telling y'all out there, we're already one foot away from the edge of the track. So if they're kicking up dirt, they're already a foot outside of the zone. Right here, Kuroda on the, uh, the screen. He is our starter. In the US, we have Sopa. So he's like the J Sopa. <laughs> we always compare a lot of the guys that work uh, out here for FD Japan as uh, we, we have the American version or the Japanese version. And we have we, we actually have a J everybody uh, in, uh, in FDJ. And I'm sorry, we all, uh, in, you know, probably already catch on, but we usually just say J, uh, shortening Japan or Japanese. It's easier to just say that, so. Exactly. That's his slang lingo interpretation. That's why I always say, like, J-Land. We're in J-Land. That's true. Uh, right now, towing the vehicle onto the tow truck. I mean, just me saying, you know, it probably would have been easier to, or unless the car is still leaking for it. Oh, I think it is. Okay, they didn't want to leak. They didn't want to make the car leak all over the track. But it's fuel, so I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not the specialist here, so I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut. I just want to hurry up and see the next battle. I feel you on that. <laughs> but yeah, Yamashita, he ended uh, seventh last year, so he's gonna try to bump himself up. He was a back-to-back -back champ before that, um, but Masayama came in for the steal. Yeah. Oh, well, you know. Year. Speaking of which, speaking of which. Yamashita has a nickname. He's Champ Yamashita. He's the champ. Uh, everybody call him Champ, Champ, Champ. I call him Champ as well. But then he's a champ from the first uh, AE86 drifting contest that they had at Ebisu Circuit a long, long time ago. And uh, next to me here, uh, we have the champ. And I don't know why I forgot who started the nickname, but I think it was the judge, Andrew Yen. Uh, 
Andrew Yen. It was Andy Yen. Started calling uh, Sean the champ, too. Uh, before we come back to see the champ, let's go ahead and take a short break. We'll be right back after these messages. オンロード。オフロード。世界中で活躍する。ケンダ。その信頼を支える。精神性、安定性と対魔能性。世界が認めた技術と信頼を街のりで。高品質と納得の価格、太陽保全車をあなたに。ケンダ。What's up guys, it's Freddy Gospel and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban.
極限の世界だ。そこでこそ磨かれる本物がある。クスコ。伝統と革新。オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチオグラレーシングプラッチ ORC back right now you can see right there Yamasha's car is getting pulled off the tow truck back for the 2023 G-Shock presents Formula Drift Japan round one here at Suzuka Twin Circuit 10th year in the making we're in the Mia Prefecture beautiful weather out getting warm out Robbie took off his jacket so he's, uh, he's ready to go now oh yeah I'm uh, 0.3 pounds lighter now um, looking at uh, you know uh, the cleanup, it, I hope it's not going to affect the, the, the chase car from the start, but it is fuel, so uh, hopefully it evaporates. And uh, let's go ahead and get back to the top 32, the second half of top 32 right here. We got the young 13-year-old driver driving the Cusco Racing Yaris, qualifying second from yesterday, Hiroya Minoa versus car number 58, Kazuhiro Kubo driving his vacants 180SX. And here he is, Minoa, filling the outer zone one nicely. Oh, uh -oh. looks like taking a little bit too deep through that outer zone two. Kubo adjusting himself. Oh, but a huge correction by Kubo in that outer zone three. Not able to carry it all the way through. And here they both are finishing up. Both had their, you know, mistakes, tweaks here through that lead wow, and I chase just, run. Uh, I just have to double check to make sure how bad the mistakes are from the lead car because right here it looks like he almost incomplete and right here going a little too wide but right there uh kubo uh maybe he reacted a little bit too much to the tire off at the outside zone three he had a major correction um let's go ahead and see this oh, very shallow at outside zone two then oh you know what actually uh Kubo kind of uh, caught up a little bit too much because of the outside zone two mistake by the lead driver. So we'll see here, tables are gonna be turned. Kubo's gonna be in the lead this time. Minoa is gonna be in the chase. Minoa. Going with it, Minoa, 13 years old, in the chase position in the Cusco GR Yaris, going against Kubo right here in the lead in his 180SX, coming around outer zone two, keeping that pressure on him. Minoa coming around outer zone three, nice job right there in that chase position, not getting smoked out just yet, fighting to be closer to him into this outer zone four. Now we're gonna have to see the lead to lead, chase to chase, cross comparison between these two drivers. And now I think it's really going to depend on how heavily we see the mistakes that were made by the lead and chase of the battle before this. Uh, because right now, I mean, everything was pretty uh, fair for both the drivers right here. Kubo uh, trying to fill the zones doesn't go deep enough. Um, but as a lead driver, uh, Minoa goes too deep and makes mistakes. But uh, since Kubo isn't going deep enough, doesn't make the mistakes that uh, Minoa does. Um, and I would have to say Kubo is taking less risks as a lead car um, versus Minoa. Uh, Minoa's uh, lead run was a little bit more risky, obviously, to take the win, but it does uh, come back and bite you in the butt again. But right now, looking at Kubo's lead, it looks like he's a little bit too shallow on the line 
at most of the outside zones. Um, and the, the chase driver giving good chase and staying within proximity. Um, we'll see here, waiting for the official call by these judges, and there you are, the spectator's view right there, right outside of outer zone three. Have a horseshoe spectator view for them. And it's definitely in your face right there in outer zone three. It looks like yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be a, a, a close or hard uh, a call for us. And here we are. Imamura is gonna go left while we have Adriana going left also. So it looks like Hiroya Minoa with the Cusco Racing GR Yaris is gonna get the win and gonna be the first one on the right side of the bracket. Yeah, I almost went with the one more time on that one because of the lead uh, Minoa did and uh, the mistake that uh, uh, Kubo did. But looking at the lead, the lead chase to chase, I think the Minoa's run was a little bit better because he was trying to go to the outside, trying to uh, take the bigger risk versus Kubo keeping it, you know, uh, small and compact and the chase position of Minoa being able to give uh, the lead driver a, a pressure. So uh, the winner goes to the 13 year old that's gonna move on to the top 16 and uh, better luck next time for Kubo uh, making it back for multiple seasons. We see Yamashita talking to his teammate, Takahashi. Getting things figured out. Both of them making it through the top 32, but there you go. Our next battle, who's gonna go against Minoa? Is it gonna be number 56 coming all the way from Thailand, Ming Ming, or is it gonna be number 666, Shuichi Mano? Yeah, Ming Ming did a great job at Qualify, and uh, he's a champion from a uh, uh, series in Thailand. Very uh, sharp, young driver going against the veteran now in FD Japan, Mano. There you go, here they are coming around outer zone one right there. Ming Ming filling wow. outer zone one nicely. Oh, looks like Mano getting held up there in that outer zone two, coming back around. Nice job, like Robbie said, 2022. Thailand, drift champion right there, swinging in to outer zone four with a pretty solid lead run. Mono struggling to close that proximity all the way through. Yeah, so speaking to the driver, we know that Ming Ming never driven this track, but he did say that he did practice this track on the sim, and uh, looks like he's already been on this track so many times, he knows what to do, and uh, I don't see really any uh, major mistakes made by the lead driver. Uh, what we see right now is uh, the chase driver, Mono, got a little too close at the outside zone one, two area, right here and uh, it looks like he swung the car a little bit too much and that created a gap uh, not a, not not a not so close um, in proximity with the lead car by mono and everything after that is pretty much the same where mono kind of hung tight stayed where he was supposed to be at but the gap was never filled so we'll see here tables are going to be turned Ming Ming and the Mr. DIY Ling Long Tire Drift Team Orange S15 on the right side hey. while you have Vitor racing with Chotty Boy style. And we're going to study this throughout the season, but we really don't know how to pronounce this. So here we are coming around into that outer zone one. Mono, nice shot. Oh, oh looks like he's taking. Ming Ming just took a little bit more drastic approach into the outer zone two. Struggling to keep that car with a close proximity. Mono coming around through the touch and go into this outer zone four here. So we'll have to see this replay, not the cleanest chase we've seen. Yeah, that's a huge mistake that the, uh, the chase driver did, uh, diving in a little bit too much. And uh, the lead also dipping tires a little bit on the outside zone three and outside zone two. Now there's more proximity uh, when we compare these two drivers, uh, smaller line outside zone four by Miming as well, right here. Kind of dives in a little bit too much, so there was no line uh, mimicking line at the outside zone two area, but he tries to adjust his car as fast as possible getting to the outside zone three. Now, uh, Mono doing his own thing, but a little bit wider on some of the areas. Now we're gonna have to see, you know, what they did lead to lead, chase to chase, I think. Uh, we're leaning towards one or the other, but we're gonna go ahead and see uh, what the mistakes are going to be uh, by both of the drivers. Here we are, looks like it's coming up here soon, but I do like how Mimi was very aggressive through that run. There you go, we got a one more time. Adriana's gonna go left. 
and Nishida's gonna go one more time. So we're gonna see these two guys battle it out one more time to see who's gonna move on to the top 16. So I think uh, Sean went with Ming Ming because he probably weighed out the, uh, the, the mistakes that both of the drivers made. And since there was proximity on Ming Ming's chase, uh, let me go ahead and ask him real quick. While he asks him next at the line, you're going to have Kanta on the left side going against Daichi Mizutani. Yeah, so it is because uh, Ming Ming got, was able to get into chase mode right away where uh, Kubo kind of hung back and stayed uh, further away. But let's go ahead and go to the next battle here. He meant Mono, but here we are Mono, coming around. Sorry. Kanta, he took second overall last year. He's in the lead this time. Oh, and it looks like... Mizutani kind of hesitated there and dove in at outer zone two. Yeah, he got. Oh, there you go. Uh, Big we were right the, there. Yeah, we were talking about this at the drivers meeting. He was way too shallow, leaving outside zone three on the line. And uh, at the initiation, it looked like he over rotated. And uh, I bet you, if we saw it in the, um, yeah, he over rotated, a little bit too much angle, fixed it, uh, but he came in. It was uh, right. The timing was kind of done right, but that's not fluid as a chase car then right here right in front of the judging stand he did have to correct a major make a major correction going uh, around the touch and go kind of a sloppy run by the chase car uh but he seems like he was concentrating on just staying close uh to the lead car yeah a lot of wavering by mizutani uh really adjusting his car in that chase position kanta kind of doing his thing like i said he took second overall Got 380 points last year. We're gonna see how he's gonna do. Got new livery yeah. with this Ling Long Tire Drift Team Orange JZX100. And a lot of these cars get shallow on the touch and go area. We understand that, but we did talk about this in the drivers meeting at the chase car. Don't go on the small line. And uh, as you saw, like this line had to cut in a lot so that might even be an incomplete at the chase car. Here we are getting a 3-2-1. Mizutani in the lead this time. Kanta in the chase. Kanta getting a little left behind early on in that outer zones one and two, but bringing it right back here through this outer zone three. Mizutani just trying to run away from him through this touch and go back around into the outer zone four. So it looks like, uh, yeah, like you said, uh, Mizutani kind of uh, running away, nice angle, but when he was leaving the angle, he was pulling out or I'm sorry, when he was leaving outside zone two, he was pulling out the angle that he threw at first. So instead of driving through the zone with angle, he threw the car to get to angle fast, then he just started to take the angle out. Like, let's go ahead and check this out. Then he starts to, there you go, drive. He started to, how can I say it? Waver uh, off with wave, it. Yeah, he started to dart into the switchback that we have at the outside zone three area as uh, the lead car, but is that gonna be good enough to flip everything around? One Kanta last. giving a little bit too much space at the initiation and uh, not being able to fill outside zone two. Here we are, Ima is gonna go left for Kanta. Adriana going left, those. so there you go. Kanta is gonna get the win and move on to the top 16. <laughs> So here we go, uh, Kanta taking out Mizutani. Um, and you know, the dynamic driving that Mizutani did uh, really looked great. Just need to keep it within uh, the, the correct amount of fluidity. So at the line ready to go, you got number 530, Wataru Masuyama going against number eight, Yo Okabe. Yeah, Masuyama is an ex MD USA driver. He's taking a break from the USA series this year, concentrating on the FDJ series, driving the TRRs. Here we go, Okabe with the JZX100. Uh, he had been campaigning from last year. Here they are coming around, Masuyama doing his thing in the lead position. Okabe was deep in those zones, trying to keep that close proximity here, leaving this outer zone three real wide there by Masuyama, trying to make it happen into the touch and go here, bringing it right back into this outer zone four. And I gotta say, yeah, it, lo it looks like, I mean, Masuyama doesn't feel outside zone two too much, and also he leaves outside zone three really late where he is pretty much doing almost a straight line burnout. I mean, I would have to say that's really, really close, but uh, I'm not a big fan of that, where he should have left outside zone three a little bit later. Now let's go ahead and see 
There you go, Okabe keeping the pressure, doing a good job. And right here, since uh, Masayama hangs on at the outside zone three a little too long, he, he runs out of space on the driver's left right in front of the judging stand and uh, has to really, really do like a straight line burnout uh, pretty much going to the touch and go. Exactly. Masayama was, like you said, late in outer zone three, but at the same time he was too deep. He was two tires off right there because, like I said, there's that one foot buffer that he was on. We'll see how he's going to do in the chase position while Okabe is going to be in the lead. You got a good ride girl there with the hat on. We got the canola oil girls cheering on the drivers here see how why don't we have we don't, why don't we have girls cheering for us because you have me and i have you oh, okay good enough masayama in the chase okabe in the lead here's okabe coming real aggressive through outer zone one right there masayama sh matching that aggression in proximity around outer zone three here nice job through outer zone three bringing it right back out right here into the touch and go switching back through outer zone four just finding himself masayama into the strong All finish. Right. So now I have to compare both of the lead and uh, chase run by these drivers right here. Okabe not filling the outside zone two as deep as he should be, but does a good job at outside zone three. Masayama, great uh, proximity and pressure kept onto the lead car and the good line chasing um, the driver from outside zone three all the way up to uh, the touch and go area. That was a nice lead job in outer zone three. And you can see Masayama keeping that pressure all the way through that second half of the track. So let's see. see. Yeah, I think we're gonna try to check out the side by side. Uh, Cause we wanna compare the leads and the chases. And right here with the drone. That gives us some close up views of uh, some of these runs too, to see how close physically these cars are because it looks different from when you're in the car and away from the car. So let's go ahead and see the side by side view right here. A lot of angle from Okabe. And you know what, I'd have to say, Okabe is keeping the pressure on to the, the, the chase car as well. Yeah, it looked fairly the same pressure for chase cars. Let's see again, the side-by-side -side view, lead to lead, chase to chase. Analyzing both runs, we'll see the, what, what the judges calls gonna be here. So we'll see. What do y'all think out there? Are we trying to get a one more time battle? Or is it gonna be Masayama in the green? Good ride, Motorsports GR Yaris, or is it gonna be the Team Kazama with Power Vehicles, JZX100 by Okabe? We'll see here. Spectators out, beautiful weather. Here we are, Imamura is gonna go right to Okabe, Adriana going right, so it looks like Ro Okabe is gonna get the win and move on to the top 16. Abe moving on in his team Kazama with power vehicles JZX 100. Yeah, explaining that uh, Masayama not giving a fair chance for Okabe to give chase. Okabe doing a good job as a lead driver, giving the chase driver a fair chance to give him chase. And that's why all, all the judges went with Okabe this time. So Masayama gets knocked out at top 32. Um, uh, then let's go ahead and move on to the next battle, like you said. Next at the line, you got Yusuke Kusaba in the Cusco Racing GR. 8-6 going against number 100, Andrew Gray and his JZX 100. This is a four-time champion 100 right here. He's uh, yes, competing against. This is actually a piece of uh, 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 Formula history. Japan history, yeah. yeah. There you go, so it's a collector's item. 
Hit up Andy. <laughs> Here he is in the chase. Let's see how Kusava's gonna do. Number three in qualifying. He's gotta do a solid lead run. Oh, oh! No! And he took himself out right there. Wow. Andy doing his thing, ripping around the track, getting it in right here. Kusaba making a wow. huge mistake early on in the outer zone two, washing out. So is that the pressure of a four-time champion or what? I hope not. Hopefully he wasn't listening to the live stream and heard me say that. But yeah, that's very unfortunate for Kusaba. I just want to make sure that there was no like pushing out, which I doubt. It looked like Kusaba, oh yeah, Kusaba went way off. He was uh, uh, nowhere to be found on the track. And uh, right when he passes three tires, I got to say, Andy was looking really good on that run. Seeing him back out here, let's see how he's going to do in the lead this time while Kusaba is going to be in the chase. Wow, Kusaba, I think Kusaba initiated really late. We'll see here. Like I said, Andrew Gray is going to be in the left side in his JZX100, his Team Kazama with Power Vehicles 100, going against, on the right side, number 77, Yusuke Kusaba in his Cusco Racing GR86. Yes, yeah, so I wouldn't say the initiation made by uh, Andrew Gray wasn't the cleanest either, but, I mean, comparing it, we're going to have to compare lead, lead chase to chase, but as a lead car, I don't think there's anything to compare it with lead. You never know what's going to happen until uh, the end, because this is drifting. Here it is right here. Andy doing his thing, filling the outer zone two, but man, Kusaba once again being too hot right there through outer zone two. Oh, just barely nicking his, oh, taking out the back of Andy and the front of the Cusco GR86 uh -oh. R. Uh, I think Andrew Gray's prop shaft fell out. Oh yeah, it just blew out. We'll see here what is going on. Both cars stalled out. Let's see this replay right here. Andy filling outer zone two. Kusaba too aggressive in the oh, outer zone two. Oh, so I think that's Andy's prop shaft. Yeah, it's Andy's prop shaft that fell out. He had some kind of mechanical issue earlier and they had to fix it. And something happened because uh, it fell out and that's what caused, uh, caused the car to slow down. Wow, talk about not knowing what's gonna happen till the end. Exactly, causing that huge decel after outer zone three and Kusaba trying to adjust himself. And man, look at that GR86, the Cusco Racing 86. Whole left side taken out. Track worker checking it out. I don't think they realize that his prop shaft is sitting back at outer zone three. What a change in pace here. We thought Andy had it right here, and you can see. Wow, so. <laughs> Look at that replay Go, right there. Going back to, and let's go ahead and see Andrew Gray's car spitting out, spits out his prop shaft right there. Right there, hey, you know what? But that thing is solid, it's not broken. Yeah. So I think maybe, the bolts came loose in the back where it connects to the diff maybe, or maybe it broke off and the- Oh, one of the flanges probably, yeah, broke. Yeah, so maybe, because I didn't see the flange hooked up to the prop shaft, so I think the bolts came off of the, uh, the diff, it, it shot out the prop shaft. Let's see again. Wow, so we got a, uh, uh, now we have, uh, yeah, this is gonna be a one more time. It's, it's official one more time because we have no lead runs to give the chase driver any chances. So both of the drivers zeroed out, got an incomplete for their leads. And uh, now we're gonna have to see who's gonna. Uh, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Could it have been if Kusabo was too close and if he touched his rear tire, locked the rear and causing it to the damage to the car? You know what I'm talking about? Let's I, I want to see the I want to see the replay if we could see that. See if there was contact there causing the rear wire to no, retire. Okay, there wasn't. Yeah, okay. There wasn't yeah. Just playing devil's advocate here. Yeah, good job, Kenny. Trying to make things more complicating. But uh, so we'll see here. Coming around, Usaba really close with the proximity. No. 
No. No contact. He hit the bumper. Yep. But let's go ahead and know we got the drone footage here, so we're checking it out in the drone footage too. But uh, all right, let's go ahead and see if we can pull up the drone uh, footage again. Here we go, we're just double checking everything to make sure that we're not missing anything out. So there was contact there, seems like. The switch back here. There's the brunt of the contact right there. Kusaba's front hitting his rear. Sorry, there's a lot of replay views getting put on here to see what happened. And they're really analyzing that last portion. And he's swinging back around. Kusaba way too aggressive and dives right into his rear right there. And then his prop shaft comes out. Both cars are now getting towed off. Huge change in pace here. This is our fifth battle on the right side of the bracket. Kusaba getting third in qualify. His lead run dipped two tires or three tires into that outer zone one, came back out real aggressive against Andy in the chase. So we'll see, you can see right there, Kusaba's car, the Cusco Racing GR86 getting towed off. Whole front end getting taken out. But yeah, we'll see here, y'all saw the replays a few times now. Scrolling back through the chat, see what was going on. Let's see. Looks like Andy's car's almost to the pits. Kusaba just leaving that finish, coming around the bend. What a crazy way to start this first round in the Formula J Japan Series. Round one here at Suzuka Twin Circuit in the Mia Prefecture. We waited 22 weeks for this, 154 days to see this day happen. We're gonna roll straight into uh, top 16 after about an hour break. We're gonna be live for that, making it happen. We're gonna do the driver's intro and then roll right into it to see who's gonna be the champ of round one of the 2023 G-Shock Presents Formula J Japan. 10th year in the making so far. Perfect weather for drifting. Robbie's on the mic right now with the tech crews on the ground to get more information to find out what is going on. Andy was out here in his Team Kazama with Power Vehicles JZX100. Four time champ in that JZX100. He was driving the Lexus RC last year. We'll see if we can, that'll come back on the track and compete this year, but looks like he's killing it in his 100.
And now this is the second year for Yusuke Kusaba in the Cusco Racing GR86. He started out with Cusco in the A90 Supra, but found himself in the GR86 and killing it in that GR86. Way better job than he was before in the A90. You can see clear skies, skies for days, spectators out here. That's looking right at us at the judges stand. And there on the Japanese live stream, Tanaguchi and Tom Saiba, they're also on the PA system talking to the crowd out here while Robbie and I are on this live stream with y'all, checking out the comments, seeing what you guys have to say. There's about a 15 to 20 second delay when it comes to the, uh, the comments. So if I come in a little late, if I don't catch your comment, I apologize. I try to tune into y'all as much as I can because you guys are the spectators that view in on what we're, what's going on out here. And we're just trying to be the the in-hand, in-person view for y'all, telling you guys what's going on. And you can see Robbie right now explaining a little about what was going on and figuring out the outcome right there. But yeah, you can see I'm checking out this live stream. Tune in, say what's up. Tell me where you're viewing in from. We got some time to kill before these two drivers that are getting their tires warmed up are ready to go for their one more time battle. This one more time battle is gonna go against Ming Ming. He's 18 years old in the Mr. DIY Ling Long Tire Drift Team Orange S15 coming all the way from Thailand. He was a 2022 champ out there going against number 666 Shuichi Mano in this Victor Racing with Chadi Boy style. One via. So let's see here. This is a one more time battle between these two. This is the second battle on the right side of the bracket. Who is going to go against Hiroya Minoa, the 13 year old Cusco racing driver? We're going to see who's going to battle it out against him and who's going to move on to the top 16. Yeah, so we do have a one more time. Uh, I'll explain the whole uh, situation later about uh, Kusaba and Gray, but let's go ahead and check out this one more time by Mimi and... Nice job by Mimi through outer zone one, adjusting himself into the outer zone two, coming back around through this outer zone three. Mono, keeping a decent proximity but, proximity, but losing it right there through that touch and go, and trying to make up for it here into that outer zone four. So Mono looks like he gives more angle at the initiation than the lead car. And Mimi, not a high rate of angle, but keeps control of the car and keeps it smooth as a lead car and does what he's supposed to be doing uh, as a lead. Now, a little bit of a separation and uh, looked like Mono had to pretty much straighten up almost uh, right in front of the touch and go area, but uh, he's trying to keep uh, get a little closer since he lost ground a little after the outside zone two area. But nice, uh, nice uh, approach by Mono at the outside zone two, getting close to the lead car. Now they're lined up, ready to go, switching their roles here. Mono's gonna be in the lead, while Mimi's gonna be in the chase. Let's see how this 18 year old is going to do in the chase position going against Mono. Yeah, so I think uh, there is an obvious, from what we saw earlier, there's an obvious difference in the uh, traction maybe or something, car power by both these cars. But let's go ahead and see. Mono keeps it loose and keeps it hanging versus Bing Bing trying to keep the pressure on Mono. Exactly. A little shallow in those zones, but he's trying to keep that close proximity coming around into this touch and go. Getting right back on it, swinging back around into this outer zone four. And I gotta say, his proximity was a lot closer than Mono when it comes to being in the chase position. Here they are leaving outer zone two here, switching back around to this outer zone three. Mono deep into that zone. Here's another one, another view. Mono hard with huge angle coming through outer zone two. Bringing back around, riding that back edge of outer zone three.
coming back around, switching into this outer zone four here. We'll see what the judges call is gonna be. Who's gonna be moving on to join Hiroya Minoa in the top 16? Is it gonna be the 18 year old from Thailand, Ming Ming, or is it gonna be the Vitor racing with Chadi Boy style one via Mono? All right, Mono has more angle as a lead. Ming Ming has better uh, proximity in the chase. Both of the chase drivers were, yeah. And look at this. We have, looks like we got two one more times. Imamura went right for Mono, but we're gonna see another one more time battle. This is I think, a, Yeah, I think, uh, I think Imamura valued, he valued the, the more angle in Mono. And uh, we kind of saw it where it was a wash where both of the drivers are making mistakes and both of the drivers aren't doing anything super spectacular as a lead. Um, and uh, that's another one more time. So here we are, the next two drivers are up, coming in. Another driver from coming from out of country from Singapore, Benjamin Chiam coming in. And the Team Kazama with Power Vehicle Supra going against number 96, Katsuhiro Meguro. Meguro in the big JZX 100, Mark II. See how they're going to perform here. Here it is, Benjamin in the lead, coming into the 3-2-1. Nice job through the outers of one. Oh, oh, right there. Oh, anything can change right there. Huge mistake, coming back around through the outer zone three. So now we have two individual, <laughs> individual runs, but guys out there in the in the in the the crowd there's a smoke big cloud coming oh washing out into the outer zone too yep so the lead car incompleted and uh it doesn't look like the chase car incompleted before um and yeah that's pretty much that's pretty much an incomplete for the lead yeah, it looks like Benjamin kind of held back on his angle on initiation for outer zone one, coming in real hot to the outer zone two. Not sure what happened. He he was kicking it early on through uh, practice and qualify through that outer zone one. Looks like he held back a little bit, but man, had too much speed on him. Yeah, so uh, I, I guess the, the chase car was trying to chase down the lead and trying to take the same line as the the lead, but then obviously the lead had uh, made a major mistake, major error going three, four tires off at the outside zone two. Yeah, maybe we should make a dirt track and uh, we should make it a little bit like a uh, rally cross where they got a drift, but we're, we'll put half dirt. Just in the zones? The yeah, dirt? just in some of the zones. We already got that. That's when you're out of the zone. <laughs> but we'll see here. But yeah, out at this track, they also got a dirt track behind us. You'll see it in the sky view. They're getting these cars squared away, taping them up. Our tech guys out there working hard in the sun, along with these track workers sweeping with the infamous witch brooms. Oh, we also got the power boss coming out. The power boss. I like that. Uh, they're going to go ahead and clean up the track real quick because there's a lot of uh, rubbish. There's a lot of uh, rocks. You said rubbish. Yeah, the photographer <laughs> after the outside zone too, they really got blasted by a lot of the dirt. And uh, right there, Benjamin did not let off and he's like, you know what? Full throttle do this. Full throttle is the answer for everything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there you are. Getting his car, his rear bumper squared away. He's in the Ishin Origin Labo JZX100. So, we'll see what's gonna happen this time around. Benjamin is going to be in the chase this time. Meguro is going to be in the lead. Anything can happen. We've seen uh, pretty much, we've seen it all almost today in this top 32 battle. We 
still got five battles to check out. We got two one more time battles happening and then we have three first time battles. All right, we're going to the replay again right here from a different view. Look at how fast they're going into outside zone one and two. And boom, look at that smoke screen, not tire smoke, but the dirt. And there's the camera people, they're like, no, holding their breath. As you see, Benjamin Supra uh, finishing off the track, you know, but unfortunately that's an incomplete for the lead car. And we have our support vehicle, High Ace. It's got the big brush guard on the front, fire extinguishers in the back. That's our safety vehicle. I think they are uh, inspecting the track just to make sure that we are able to get back on track here to finish up the top 32. The right side bracket has been taking a good amount of time right here. Yeah, it's been very interesting on this right side of the bracket. Between crashes, washing out, and then these one more time battles just making it really hard for these judges to make a strong determination on who's going to move on into that top 16 spot and you know what i know there's there's a 50 50 chance that you you know you guys out there the teams are not going to agree with us but um the driver shouldn't drive like that the driver should drive where they're perfect lead and chase and it'll be easy because it'll be like oh yeah, it was an easy call you know this guy did better you know and we want to see one more times that or you know 100 point run versus 100 point chase uh, type of one more time. That I could watch 10 times, 20 times all day long. Um, so we'll start to see that more um, as we move along in the ladder. We'll see here. Looks like the track is good. Uh, one last inspection at the finish right here. Oh, don't tell cleanup. me there's more stuff. They're just double checking, make sure it's good. But yeah, after this top 32, we're going to have a small break and then we're going to come back live with you for opening ceremonies for the top 16. And we're going to battle it out to see who's going to be the champ out here for round one of the 2023 G-Shock Presents Formula J Japan Series. And if you didn't tune in last weekend, we had the FDJ2 in the first ever FDJ3 series. We didn't have the FDJ3 qualifying, but we did have their top 16. Probably the worst weather you could think of we had out here last weekend. It was raining, it was windy, it was not ideal for qualify, but unfortunately both series had to do qualify, but that following day for tandem, it was nice weather for them. Little chilly, but not as nice as it is today. And you can see that sun blazing down, not too windy out, making it a good day of drift. And there they are cleaning up that last portion at the finish. So we'll see. Both cars are lined up, ready to go for their second portion of the run. Benjamin coming all the way from Singapore. He's gonna be in the chase this time. So we're seeing he's gonna do how he's gonna do against Megro, who's gonna be in the lead. Yeah, so as we are waiting, there's more, uh, I don't know, fluids. Uh, I think they were cleaning up towards the end of the finish line. Good thing that's not on the outside line there. It looks like it's a lot in uh, where he shouldn't be anyway, so. So here we are. Nice weather out here at Suzuka Twin Circuit. The course side guys hustling. Now they should be ready to go ahead and start off uh, the second half of the this second battle. half of this battle. And there you are, clear skies, a little bit of clouds, not many at all. If you're out here, come check out our vendors booth. It's all set up by the stage right outside of the start line. Check out the merch booth. There's a few new sh shirts this year. Check them out online. Kudo right there. Start line, ready to go. Taking in all the sun.
just so you guys all know, you can't see on the camera, the tow rig is just checking this last half of the course. The drive lane going back to the pits, finding a few spots here and there, making sure it's good to go. Thank you all out there for tuning in to us. I see the comments coming in. People coming in from Ohio here. That's where my parents are at. So shout out to my parents for tuning in, checking me out. Um, and then everybody else, friends and family out in Texas also. But yeah, who else is viewing in and where you at? Vegas, shout out right there. Robbie's doing a little bit of talking right now. Georgia, Spokane, Washington, New Jersey, Chile, New Jersey, Canada, Virginia. Man, I appreciate it. I know it's late in a lot of those places, especially, uh, well, it's trickling down, I guess, East Coast right now is what, about 10.30ish p.m. Central Texas, Wisconsin, Estonia, Oregon, Minnesota. Hey, thank you all. I do appreciate it. Hands down, last three season has been phenomenal having y'all uh, checking us out on the live stream, the comments and stuff like that. Making me want to come back every year, excited to come back. But I got to say, all due to Robbie, you know, holding it up, making it happen on the live stream and with his judging. So we'll see Sorry. what the judges are going to say here. Sorry, guys. I had to get uh, keep uh, Kenny... Let him go solo here. But let's go ahead and check out this. This is a history. Past 10 years we had. We didn't have a full uh, number of seasons at the 2014. But we did have two exhibitions. And after that, three years in a row, we had Andrew Gray. Man, Mike Widett came in and uh, finished the winning streak. Then Andrew Gray won again uh, the year after that. Then uh, two years after that, we had uh, the champ, Koichi Amasa, win the championship twice. Then last year we had the young driver Matsuyama uh, win the 2022 season. All right, here we are. We're getting the second half. Oh, it looks like there is a flag, possibly a pylon touch. Somebody said, when am I gonna be competing? Probably never. I'm definitely just a recreational drifter. I'm not the best, I'm not gonna lie. Say it like it is. But with that being said, I believe Matsuri is going to be next week, so hopefully we'll see some of y'all out there. Let's go! I'm going to try to go uh, half to Matsuri, but no, I'm not sure. I don't not wear sure makeup, yet. I just have beautiful skin, I guess. Nobody ever tells me that. But you got that beard cover and everything. <laughs> All right, so that was a restart. No, uh, I gotta, I can't Houston. lie though. I got a sunburn from all that other stuff we were doing like yesterday and all that being outside. So definitely got a lot what, of that. What stuff were you doing? You know, watching you work, duh. I do that best here. Yes, we had to do the tech. Yes, you did the ball point But you did say we. All right, here we are. The second half of this battle. Benjamin in the chase. Meguro in this chase uh, lead right here, coming around outer zone one, swinging back around. Benjamin keeping that pressure early on right there. Look at that, diving in in that outer zone three. Nice job by Benjamin. Oh, just trying to keep that car better in there. Driven into the touch and go back around. But man, Meguro making it hard right there because he threw down a solid lead run. Yes, he did, and Benjamin did everything he can to keep the pressure on, but is this good enough to Flip, flip things around where uh, Benjamin incompleting in his lead position. But I don't know because uh, Meguro does a pretty solid job in the lead position. But Benjamin, uh, great proximity throughout the track. Imamur going right. Sean going right and Robbie going right. So Katsuhiro Meguro is gonna get the win. Benjamin unfortunately made that huge mistake in outer zone two. All the way from Singapore, um, currently driving at various series. Um, it's uh, Benjamin, unfortunately he's knocked out here at the top 32. 
Uh, better luck for him next time, and we will see Meguro moving on to the top 16. And who is he going to go against? Is it going to be Andrew Gray or Yusuke Kusaba? I won't know because uh, they're going to have their one more time in a little bit. But before we go back to these one more time, let's go ahead and check out these girls here. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and check out these cars out here lined up. This is a uh, Ling Long Tire Drift Team Orange A90 Supra driven by Hashi Masanori, car number eight. And it's a Supra battle because it's car number 61. Maui Yamanaka also driven by Motorsport A90 Supra. All Supra battle with these young drivers. Yamanaka getting a little left right there on the straight into that 3-2-1 and all through this course struggling, not able to make it into that outer zone two and not able to close that proximity even though he's taking a oh. shorter line. Oh, he's straightening right there, leaving outer zone three. Something is wrong with Yamanaka's vehicle. Oh, and Kohashi just holding on right there through the finish in outer zone four. Yeah, something is not right on Yamanaka's vehicle because uh, I don't even know the run-up didn't even look right because he was nowhere near to be found. Kohashi, there's like a five, six car gap in between these two vehicles and a huge correction made by Yamanaka after the outside zone three and uh, that is it for his chase run. And right here, Kohashi dipping a tire at the outside zone four. Looks like he's riding a wild horse out here. Uh, finishes up his uh, run as a lead vehicle. Yeah, Yamanaka two years ago took FDJ2, won the series, came into the Pro Series in his S15, but now he's coming out in the Good Ride A90 Supra, debuting it out here first round. But did not look too hot there in that chase position. Yeah, I have to say Kohachi is a A90 Supra, um, also uh, debuting that vehicle for him as a driver. Ah, uh, sounds like there's a clutch issue uh, from Yamanaka's car. And uh, Kohashi's already back to the start line. We see Yamanaka's good ride, A90 Supra, pulling out of the track, going to the pits. Yeah, I don't know what they can do for uh, a, a, a slipping clutch. Yeah, we'll see. But yeah, Friday during practice, there were some issues with the vehicle new vehicle they're just trying to get all the kinks out of it and unfortunately on Friday they had to uh, do some heavy maintenance on the Supra so we'll see if they can fix this issue what they're gonna do but like Robbie said Kohashi's ready to go Kohashi last year getting third overall with 364 in the series he was an s15 changing his power plant in his uh, vehicle into this a90 Supra here's the overview you can see how deep the Good Ride Motorsports team is this year. And then right behind them, that's the start of all of our vendor booths out here. Come check out the material or the merchandise they have. You have our tech guys on the ground, gonna find out what's going on. And it looks like they're gonna be taking their competition time out, which is probably a given, seeing that he was going back to the pits. There's Chen Chen, uh, the Good Ride Japan representative looks a little frustrated with what's going on here because their A90 Supra has an incomplete in the chase position as they are returning back to the pits for competition timeout. But right now it looks like in the burnout box, you can see a little bit of smoke on the left side of the screen. You have Kusaba getting his tires warmed up while in the other burnout box, it looks like he may be ready to go. Andrew Gray in his JZX 100. There they are, getting the car pushed in. The time's getting started. I don't even know what you can do in the five minutes. I mean, some, some, I mean, some teams are fast enough they could pull the tranny right off and maybe even change the clutch. But already sitting on an incomplete, I don't even know what they're planning to do. Usaba rolling up to the line now. He'll be in the lead. This is a one more time battle between these two. We'll see, we're waiting for Andy to make it to the line. But I don't see him in the burnout box anymore. Not sure if he went back to the pits, what's going on, but looks like Kusaba is ready to go and at the line. 
Yes, so I think uh, maybe Kusaba is ready now. So what's going to happen is uh, Andrew Gray's team is going to have to call a competition timeout. And you just saw the blurb in the chat. If you want to see the bracket and see where we're at right now, click on the link above. Has the bracket ready for y'all. And if you're just tuning in, this is like the, we're down to our last four battles. Two one more time battles happening. We got two ready to go. The second half of Kohashi and Yamanaka. Yamanaka right now taking his competition five minute timeout, trying to see what's going on with his car. They said clutch is slipping. Um, Kohashi waiting to battle it out right now at the line. You have Kusaba, so that's the one more time battle between Yusuke Kusaba and Andy Gray in his JZX100. We're waiting for Andy to make it to the line right now. Not sure what's going on. Robbie's getting a little bit more. You can see right there, Andy's getting pushed into his stall. So this might not be good for that team right now. Once they touch it, there you are. And he's looks like he's starting the clock. That's Ebichan right there. Definitely got our tech guys working hard today on the ground in the pits. But yeah, I want to give a shout out to the pit workers out there, the teams to make it happen, to get their cars out here. It's been a struggle. A lot of these cars have had issues, but hey, it's round one. And man, they're definitely putting in work. So hands down to every one of the teams out there, the mechanics putting in work behind the scenes and making it happen. And you know, we just had tech um and we have certain rules that the cars have to follow and some of the cars didn't make it and a lot of these guys behind the scenes they had to work throughout the night to get the cars ready for tech uh but the rules are rules so we have to you know follow the rules and uh good job to the teams that made it out and we had none of the cars that were disqualified for you know tech reasons there were some iffy moments and things that the cars had to do um overnight and uh, i think uh the teams and the the mechanics probably did a good job and uh, made it, so hands down to them because they're always putting in work. But with that being said, let's look at the brackets. I'll go ahead and tell you what's going on the left side of the brackets. Right now we have Matsuyama, number one qualifier. He'll be going against Mad Mike Wadette coming all the way out from New Zealand while you have Shigaisa Sasayama going against Kodai Sobagiri. So we'll see how Sobagiri's gonna do in his new machine. And the battle after that's going to be Takumi Sato going against Kazumi Takahashi. And last but not least, on the left side of the bracket, it's going to be Yukio Fausto going against Koichi Yamashita. Yamashita, the champ, two-time champ, coming in against Fausto, the Brazilian giant, I guess you could say. But big on the chat. Yeah, Dian, one of the most dynamic drivers uh in our series and uh, very exciting yeah, yes. favorite, yeah. Uh, but i think we're starting to see a lot of personality uh slowly coming up in the fd japan um uh, lineup here and uh it just gets funner and funner because i think uh you know just just the way that the japanese people are they are very you know subtle and very low-key on a lot of stuff um, so they're not the type that wants to jump in front of the camera and be like, hey guys, you know, or, or you know, good at trying to promote themselves. So if you have the time to, you know, take the time to go ahead and look up some of these drivers um, and maybe even try to give them a little follow on their Instagram or, you know, Facebook or whatever they have. As yes, a for sure. I mean, it's it's good to tune into them, especially like either on their Instagram and stuff, because they, they try to keep all their fans in tune on what's going on, especially like what's going on right now with Andrew Gray's car. Yeah, so it seems like something else is wrong. They look like they got the drivetrain issue uh, squared away, but now they have the hood open. Um, you can see right there, Jonah putting in work. Oh, it's, I don't know, maybe it's a power steering issue because uh, we saw uh, Gray turn his steering wheel left and right. Hopefully that means it's an okay and it's a go. Yeah, this is who we're waiting for right now. Yusuke Kusaba is at the line, ready to go. Andy's team taking the five minute, making sure the car is good to go. And it looks like it's going to be good. Sounds like a belt. Or maybe something else is good to I'm not sure. So if you're just tuning in, what happened is this one more time battle between the two at the second half. When Andy was in the lead, 
Uh, his prop shaft came out, shutting both cars down. They uh, made some contact out of outer zone three. On the right side of the bracket, I didn't get to get over there. You got Hiroya Minoa, the 13-year-old Cusco racing driver. He'll be going against, we don't know yet. We still got a one more time battle between Ming Ming and Mono. And then rolling down, you have Kanta going against Okabe. And uh, we still got the, you know, the mystery between Kohashi and Yamanaka. I think the uh, five minutes, I'm not sure how far along we are on the competition timeout from Yamanaka. He's finding out right now because this last part of the bracket is still up in the air. Saba back in the burnout box, warming his tires up. And right there on the left, you can see Andy getting his tires warmed up. Looks like his car is gonna be ready for this battle. Yeah, been a lot of delays on the right side of the bracket, but hey, hat, hats off to y'all for tuning in. Hopefully you guys got a drink, something to eat during this long break that we just had between these two drivers. Yeah, so I guess there was a belt replacement uh, within the competition timeout for Gray. And then now, oh my God, now we have something wrong with Kusaba's car. The flashers uh, it's are on. Not, yeah, it's not, a, the car cannot move in the, the, the burnout box. So that's a one-two punch, a left-right hook to us. <laughs> we're exactly. trying to get the competition going. It doesn't but. stop. <laughs> but hey, we're here for y'all. We're trying to entertain y'all. I know you guys don't want to hear us talking, talking about the weather and everything else that's going on. But unfortunately, these cars definitely are getting put through the ringer today in top 32. This is definitely a face palm situation, but this is what happens. We're live. We're live out here. Round one. G-Shock presents Formula Jet Japan. First round here at Suzuka Twin Circuit. Keeping us on our toes and interested. All right, so Kusaba broke a tie rod in the burnout box. So now he's going to have a competition timeout. So Andrew Gray is going to be waiting. So now, uh, like I said earlier, Yamanaka, I think, threw in the towel. So uh, we have a buy run that we have to see from Kohashi. We have a one more time we have to see from uh, Ming Ming and Mano. And then we still have one we more battle, one our more last time. battle of the day. We still have to get to that. Man, if I was Suenaga and Imamaida, which is the last battle of this uh, bracket, I'd be so mad because it's like, yo, what's going on? It's, uh, <laughs> yo, I'd be like, yo, hurry. Hurry, hurry this up a little bit, yeah. Man. But hey, you know what? We're not even, how how can we, you know how some people are like, oh, it's rigged, or oh, you know, there's a script. It's like, how, how can we even do this? Like, all this is just natural and it always happens and it even seems like it's weird. That's what happens when it's live. But I'm just tuning into the live chat and I see some of y'all talking and Robbie's, yeah, he's a really good breakfast cook. He takes me to uh, 7-Eleven. What? Somebody asked if you could cook breakfast. That's oh, no, I'm good. I, uh, my favorite, <laughs> no, my favorite is French toast. I can make some uh, killer French toast. I'll, I can too. You want to compete? All right, we're we going we to have a, a French toast shootout. Oh, man, my kids, you know, they'll they'll vouch for me too, man. I do that creme brulee little touch to okay, it. Okay, <laughs> so, so one of these rounds I will make my French toast at, uh, I think, um, Kazama's uh, pit. They have, like, a full and it's right there kitchen. to the right you yeah. can see yeah they got a full kitchen over there so you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go ahead and make me some french toast so, yeah let's go ahead and go oh let's we'll go. do we'll do it for sure but yeah somebody asked about the weather the temperature's risen about for me fahrenheit it's risen about eight degrees it's 66 degrees out here um go ahead and tell me the celsius there robbie it's like 20 something there, there you are 24 but Ko kohashi's getting his tires warmed up he's gonna do his buy run because unfortunately yamanaka's not going to be able to make it to the line unfortunate for yamanaka with their new car or uh i think they had that vehicle as a demo car but for Yamanaka as a competitor, it's a new car. Uh, hopefully they can get whatever it is squared away um, and get ready for the next round. Because the next round is going to be at Ebisu Circuit. Yes. And uh, for the Ebisu round, we are going to can Sean Adriano as the judge because we're tired of seeing him. We're going to have an old, old uh, judge come back 
uh, to join us. He's going to be a guest judge. So uh, no more Sean after uh, this round. No, I'm just kidding. He's going to come back for another one. But for next round, we're going to have some, another judge. Uh, and here we are. Kohashi leaving the chicane now, coming around into this outer zone one, showing us the performance of this A90 Supra and his driving. Overall last year, Kohashi finished third with 364 points in the year. But this year, he's bringing out this new machine in his A90 Supra with the Ling Wong Tire Drift Team Orange. New livery and all. And there you go, Kohashi gets the win. Is this moving on? Who is he going to go against his teammate, Suenaga or Imamaida? We will find out after a few more battles. Uh, that we have still waiting because we are going to go back to the second one more time battle of Ming Ming and Mano. So it looks like they're lining up now, ready to go. Yes, the vehicles are lined up here, Ming Ming to the left and Mono to the right, but before we go to them, we have these gals here cheering the drivers on, and I think they're cheering on Ming Ming's car. Young 18-year-old driver all the way from Thailand driving the Mr. DIY Ling Long Tire Drift Team Orange S15 Sylvia packed with a 2J versus car number 66, Shuichi Mono driving the Vintour Racing with Tempo Style 1V up. We'll see how Mono's gonna do in the chase this time. Mimi coming in real hot into outer zone one, holding back a little bit through there. Mono coming real aggressive with the angle into that outer zone two. Coming back in, into this outer zone three, diving into that proximity. But here's where he got left last time. Looks like he's getting left a little behind there into that touch and go into outer zone four here. And Mimi riding three wheels through that outer zone four. It looked like a little rodeo action going on by Ming Ming at the outside zone four, but still right here, a little timid at the outside zone one uh, by the lead driver here. And it looks like uh, Mano has more angle as a chase. And I think that's why uh, one of the judges went with Mano instead of a one more time earlier. But it looks like Ming Ming is keeping the lines tight, dipping one tire at the outside zone four. Uh, Mano trying to keep the pressure on, but look at Mano. Uh, taking a shallower line at the outside zone too. It's very easy to see with this drone view. Nah, getting left right there in the touch and go, coming back around. So here we are. Mono is going to be in the lead this time. Ming Ming's going to be in the chase. And once again, I'm sorry for you, uh, Ming Ming fan. Don't. I don't want to even attempt. He has it on the side of his car, too, to put that on there, yeah, so that's it. That's it. And here they are, coming around. Mono in the lead this time, real deep into that zone one, dipping that tire right there toward oh, the end. Oh, he's throwing no, him up, hold no. on. Just holding on right there, saving his car from that wall. Man, that could have turned out so much worse. I just heard Imamura say, wow, that's a new line. And yes, it is a new line. I've never seen that before, but Mono, got stuck into the dirt and he just went straight. He still tried to do a transition and he almost made it. He almost came back into the track. Man, that got a little scary there, especially from our view. Here it is right here, the other view. Look at that. He was beelining it straight for the mound <laughs> and just saved himself. Hey, so the chase driver was probably like, yo. What happened? Like, what happened? Because Mono said, Mono just uh, pieced out on him on the, he's, he's like, like, you know what, I'm going to make my own. I want to go rally. He's like, I want to go rally. I didn't get the off-road memo. See, a lot of these drivers, a lot of these drivers like to go off track. And maybe it is a thing. It's like drifting, you know, uh, you know, maybe it, the origin of it is, you know, road racing, going fast, cars start sliding. And also drifting is a technique in the rally. And there you are. Mimi's going to get the win. He's going to move on. It's going to be the 18-year-old versus the 13-year-old. Two young drivers. Ooh. That's going to be interesting. How old are you, Sean? Oh, Sean is 30. He's not that old. We're not even going to start talking. I just started the conversation, but I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. I was about so to say, let's go ahead and move along. Move along. 
All right, so on the left side bracket, we have the first battle of top 16. It's going to be Matsuyama versus Mad Mike Wadet. Second battle is going to be Sasayama versus Silvagiri. Third battle is going to be Sato versus Takahashi. Fourth battle is going to be Fausto versus Yamashita. Now on the top right, we're, where we have on the bracket, the second half of the top 16 is going to be the young driver, 13-year-old Minoa, going against another young driver, 18-year-old Ming Ming. After that, it's going to be another young driver, Kanta, going against Okabe. They're both in their mid-20s. Now we're still waiting on who's going to be the winner of Andrew Gray versus Yusuke Kusaba. Uh, currently, Kusaba calling a competition timeout to fix his tie rod uh, after uh, Andrew Gray calling his competition timeout, fixing his uh, belt. Waiting to see who he's going against is going to be car number 96, Katsuhiro Meguro. And the last battle of the top 16 is going to be Kohashi versus the winner of the two drivers we have here. Is it going to be Naoto Suenaga or Takatoshi Imamaeda? Now we see right here Imamaeda is driving. He's been campaigning this S14 for quite a bit now in the Formula Drift Japan Series versus the 370Z converted over to the new Fair Lady Z. Uh, full 400Z on that right there. So yes, don't be fooled. And he's still got the V packed, VR packed engine under the hood right there. Beautiful car made by Nissan. This is a brand new car uh, design uh, that they made. Yeah, this is uh, an S14 Koki Silvio. We'll see here in their lead in the chicane now. Suaganaga is going to be in the lead. Looks like they had a pylon touch. Red flag. Red flag and the uh, <laughs> yeah, the flag, too, yeah, flag man was jumping. coming out. He's like, stop, we don't want any more delay. Hurry up and go back. Yeah, he came running out to the track right there, but we'll see how it's going to go. They need to get through that chicane clean and safe to make this run happen. They are swinging back around, lining back up to the start line. Man, this is a pretty long uh, top 32. You know what that means, right? We're just going to roll right into top 16 faster. OK. So no uh, lunch break for Robbie. We'll see here. It looks like they are ready to go. This is going to be the last battle of the bracket, but we have a one more time after this. We'll see how this goes, see if we can be clean and safe, ready to go for this tandem battle going to make it to the top 16. Suenaga doing his thing right there. Imamaida trying to keep that close proximity throughout the track, doing a pretty good job. Suenaga performing very well in that lead position, leaving that outer zone three and bringing it right back around through the outer zone four with a strong finish. Imamaida let out a little bit through that outer zone four. Yeah, I think what was that sound? <laughs> it's been doing it from earlier. Here we go right here. Suenaga initiating and uh, Imamaida taking a smaller line at the beginning than going deeper in the outside zone too. That's kind of the crossing line there uh, by both of the drivers. And uh, a little bit of separation caused by that going to the outside zone three and leaving outside zone three and uh, a sizable gap. Let's go ahead and check this out. I just want to make sure to see Suenaga. Does he fill the zone? Yes, he does. And uh, looks like, Sui uh, I'm sorry, looks like Imamaida doesn't get back on throttle as early as possible um, at the outside zone too. So it looks like a little bit of separation, uh, but both of the drivers an average lead in a chase uh, run. But now they're lining back up. Imamaida is going to be in the lead this time. Suenaga is going to be in the chase. Suenaga's got to keep that pressure on Imamaida throughout the track. And here they are, ready to go. Leaving the chicane now, approaching the 3-2-1. Imamaida right here in the lead. Very aggressive approach, just getting into that outer zone one. Suenaga right there, diving in a little bit. Oh, Imamaida dipping a tire in the outer zone two. Oh. But Suenaga being way too wide in the outer zone three. Kicking dirt into the spectators. Back into this touch and go, trying to get right back into it. What happened there? Because uh, let's go ahead and see. It looks like the placement of the cars weren't good for both of the vehicles. 
Yeah, looked like uh, Suenaga just made a major mistake after the transition going to the outside zone three. He stayed a little bit too left. Drivers left throughout uh, the outside zone two area. Let's go ahead and check this out. Not super close either. And Imamaida doing his thing. He does dip a tire, but uh, Suenaga's line, very small. So he was pretty much driver's left throughout the whole uh, outside zone two area, going to the outside zone three, which pitched them out to the left uh, of the outside zone three. And uh, he made a wide turn and that's pretty much gonna be an incomplete for the yeah, chase car. Costly a mistake right there. Imamaida is gonna be getting the first one. Adriana going right. So it looks like Takatosha Imamaida is gonna get the win and get that last spot for the top 16. Yes, he does get the last spot on the top 16. But before we say the last spot, the real last spot is gonna be after this next battle because we have these two vehicles, no more uh, competition timeouts left, no more um, uh, front bumper on Andrew Gray's car. And uh, there was a, small contact and uh, things going on on the track, but both of the vehicles had to uh, get a uh, comp or I'm sorry. Utilize uh, their competition time. Make yeah, time and get their cars back on track. Uh, both of the vehicles had an incomplete on their run. And uh, let's go ahead and, uh, I'll go ahead and go over it a little later, but let's go ahead and see this battle first. Here they are right here. Kusaba's in the lead this time. Gray chasing him down right there into the outer zone two, coming back around, switching back into this outer zone three, diving in on him right here through that zone. Kusaba leaving a little early through that outer zone three. Andy finding himself real narrow right there in the outer zone four, but keeping that close proximity all the way through. Wow, you know what? Compared to the run that we had earlier, it looks like uh, Andrew Gray switched on that uh, battle chase mode here, a lot more aggressive than the first one we saw and uh, giving attack. And it looks like Kusaba doesn't seem like he's himself uh, from what I've seen earlier. He doesn't look like he's energized here, maybe because of the whole waiting and the competition timeout and the whole anticipating everything. But let's go ahead and check this out. Um, Andrew Gray matching the angle with the lead vehicle, a little bit small on the line, but matching the line right there at the outside zone three. Kusaba doing an average job as a lead, doing what he's supposed to, going to the outside zones at the outside zone two and three and four. Um, and Andrew Gray cutting a little short on the outside zone four area, but keeping the proximity and pressure on the lead car. So we'll see how Andy's gonna do in the lead this time while Kusaba is gonna be in the chase. This could be the last battle in the top 32. That last spot needs to be filled for the top 16. And here they are coming through the chicane, approaching this 3-2-1. Could be the last run of the day right now for top 32. Coming back around, Andy missing the outer zone two right there, bringing it back around. Kusaba keeping all the pressure on Andy as possible, coming into this touch and go. Making it tough on Andy to get away right there. Kusaba keeping it tight. All right, so going back to how the run was earlier, the pace is so different as a lead car from both of these drivers. Now Kusaba trying to keep the pressure on Andrew Gray as a lead car, but Andrew Gray filling the outside zone three was a little short on the line on the outside zone two. Here we go, a little small uh, line going from the touch and go to the outside zone four. Let's go ahead and check out the drone view here you go uh not making it to the outside zone two at as a lead driver does a good job at outside zone three but kusaba keeping the pressure on the lead driver andrew gray cutting a little short on the inside at the right side of uh after the touch and go on the rumble strips and not feeling outside zone four either we'll see We'll see what the call is going to be, if this is going to be the last competition for top 32, or are we going to see another one more time battle between these two drivers? Wow, it looks super similar by these two drivers. This is that lead to lead, chase to chase. Comparison. Judges are analyzing it, making sure they're making the right call. Not making it easy for these judges. That's what it's all about here in the tandem battles. Wow, it's like both of the drivers have goods and bads in the driving. I would have to say the lead driver pace, um, Kusaba does a better job at outside zone two, but he does slow down a lot more versus uh, Andrew Gray. 
he takes the shallower line, but he has a good pace leaving outside zone one and two area. So we'll see. I mean, what do you guys think? <laughs> they want it one more time, it looks like. Look here. Imamura is going to go one more time. Adrian, look at that. The, it has been answered for y'all. We are going to see a one more time battle. We're not leaving this soon out of the top 32 to roll into the top 16, unfortunately. And you guys guessed it right because uh, I don't even know if any of you went one way. It was a one more time, and uh, it's a hard decision for us to make one more time. And we do want to avoid it unless it is like a, a call like this because it's so close. Yeah, so they're going to go back, refresh the tires. We're going to see that one more time battle. The rest of the bracket is filled. This is going to be our second one more time battle between these two drivers here. We'll see how it's going to pan out. I said earlier, if you didn't see last week, we had FDJ2 and FDJ3 going on out here at Suzuka Twin Circuit. It was the first ever FDJ3 series. So it was pretty awesome to see those drivers come out and compete. And it's only going to make the Pro Series that much better filling into it. Hey, okay, so these people out here uh, that came, the spectators that are out here right now, they're probably like, oh, that was a good run or that was exciting. But I bet you a little bit of them in their brain, in their, in their head, they're thinking a little bit where it's like, this is kind of a long top 32. <laughs> Because I mean, I'm I'm happy to be able to see uh, tandem and the runs and everything. I'm I'm you know I can just watch this all day long, but it is kind of long because you know. Um, you all you know, are right too. There is no time to rest for Ravi. I need a snack. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, next month we're gonna have round two at Ebisu. It's gonna be May 20th and 21st for us. The weekend before that, you're gonna have the second round of FDUS. So definitely a lot of drifting going on. Season started. It's jam-packed. Robbie's schedule is so, so yeah, jam-packed. Come, come say hi to me and uh, Sean at FD Atlanta alongside with all the other guys, the drivers and the teams. Uh, we'll be out there. I'll be out there. And uh, we are doing a um, rotating uh, system of judging. And uh, it's very different from how it was last year. So I'll be joining that panel. Uh, so, yeah, come say hi to me and Sean. Ask Sean how them chip Japanese chips are. He'll tell you all about them. There you go. We need to get you need to get a sticker so then you can start. You know, you'll just add your own self to the booth for all the drivers, and you'll just be at the end. I have my own sticker. I, I know. Just never pass it. Exactly. Out. All right, I'll, I'll try to bring some stickers. So if you see me, be like, there "Yo, hook me up," and see, I'll be like, "I'm getting you hook guys you up with up. what?" <laughs> and then you have to say the secret word. Robbie's super cool. Then I'll be like, "All right, here you go." <laughs> Ego booster right there. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I'm cool. <laughs> no, he needs to get no, beat not. up as a judge right now. But, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully we'll see this last run. We'll wrap up top 32, and then we're going to roll into top 16 this afternoon around 1.30 local time out here. Um, probably have a short break for that. We're going to do the driver's intro, the opening ceremonies and everything. And These were, but we can't say it online because, because of various reasons. Exactly. Because of the way the world is going now. そうですね。僕昨年はですね、ま、チャンピオン争いを、え、していたんですけども、ま、残念ながら、え、チャンピオンにはなれなかったんですけども、ま、今年はですね、え、車両も変わりましたので、え、今年こそはね、しっかりと
ーまあ、この新しい車両でね、えー、対戦する相手を全員倒して、えー、てっぺんに上り詰めたいと思います。はい、よろししくお願いします。負けるとめちゃくちゃゃく悔しがってくるいやーそうですよ、もちろんめちゃくちゃ悔しいですよ、おこと男の子ですからね、はいあのーまあ、やっぱりせっかく競技に出るんですから、絶対てっぺんにはなりたいんで、はい、いつも悔しいですよ、もちろん負けたときには、はい。悔しいときに、撮影行ったら、いや、まあ大丈夫ですよ、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと態度悪いかもしれないですけど、ちょっとそこは、さしてください。<笑> So short interview. Um, uh, last year he won here, and uh, you know he was in the championship race, but he he couldn't make it. He was second overall, I think second or third overall. Uh, but then you know he said this year he's in a brand new car, new platform, shorter wheelbase. It's going to be a quicker car, more traction uh, with this car. But that's that's what's tricky. But he got the car set up pretty good, and he really likes the car. And last year he won here, and uh, you know in the new vehicle he's very confident. He wants to uh, win, and always he always wants to make it to the top. And of course if he does. Doesn't make it to the top, he's not going to be in a good mood. So if they say, "Hey, can we go to an interview at your pits?" He said, "I might not be nice, but it's okay." So here we go. Let's go ahead and see them one more time. Saab in the lead right here. Andy coming around in the chase position right there, keeping that close proximity. Whoa. Diving in right there, hard. Oh, giving him a tap right there, pushing him offline into the outer zone three. Real aggressive into that outer zone three by Andy. So here we go, seeing this. All right, so there was contact at outside zone three, and now we're going to have to try to deem fault, but uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, re-watch all these replays that we have. So we're going to check it out here, that transition from outer zone 2 to outer zone 3. And then shortly after that, the contact dove right in. Not sure how it was. Robbie's probably going to give more input on that with Kusab in mean, that I'm not, lead. I'm not, I mean, uh, just looking at this, I know that, you know, uh, Andrew Gray's pace is a little bit more quicker or faster, I would say, through outside zone two. And as you saw the approach of the lead car uh, by Kusaba, he was a little bit more slower paced, I guess, at outside zone two, where Andrew Gray came in a little bit hotter. But at the transition going into outside zone three, it looks like Kusaba was trying to get settled um, and get back on, um, and to get back on the uh, throttle there, where Andrew Gray, it looks like he came in a little bit too hot um, into outside zone three and had contact with outside uh, with Musaba. There they are getting the car squared away from the contact that was made at outer zone three. I think he wanted to see who was at fault. Um, and if, you know, Andrew Gray was at fault, most likely is. Um, Kusaba should be getting his uh, uh, time to check his vehicle. But I guess uh, that's all out the window because they're just going to go with it. Go with it. All right, here they are lining up. This could be the last portion of the battle between these two. Andy's in the lead. Kusaba's in the chase, coming around outer zone one here. Nice job leaving that outer zone one. Kusaba diving into the outer zone three, trying to stay on him right here. Andy being real wide in that outer zone three, bringing it right back around into this outer zone four. Strong finish by both drivers.
All right, so there's going to be a lot of what happened and what actually happened and what we see um, on the live stream and also, you know, watching it live and, you know, everything, you know. Uh, but uh, we're going to have to go with what we see and uh, pretty much that's it. So, um, Here we are going left. So two judges, and there you are, all three judges going with Yusuke Kusaba, going to get that win, that last spot for after two one more time battles against the four-time champ, Andrew Gray. Yes, there's been so many things going on. Going back to looking at their battle, um, I think there was uh, some uh, issues with when there was contact with Kusaba touching uh, Andrew Gray's vehicle, but there was no big change in Andrew Gray's vehicle at the first battle and maybe tires might have touched, that could have made some kind of ripple effect to, you know, his prop shaft falling off, all this other stuff. Yes, there is maybes and uh, what ifs on this, but we have to go with what we pretty much see and we can't just go with what we think or any other technicalities. We have to kind of go with, uh, you know, and maybe it was, maybe it's 5%, but we have to go with what we think at the moment. So um, at this point, point you know this is uh, the call we made so you're gonna have to bear with us and uh, this time Kusaba is gonna be moving on and it's really unfortunate for Andrew Gray uh, getting knocked out at top 32. Yes and right there you can see on the screen 1330 is gonna be opening ceremonies for top 16 and then we'll be rolling into the top 16 battles at 1400. So that's all local time to hear if you want more on the times go to the Formula Drift Japan Instagram there's a map cut out of all the regions or most of the regions in the world on what time it's going to be for yeah well actually they might have changed the time because of our top 32 being a little late but we're going to go to the top 16 ceremony from 13 30 which is one o'clock 1 30 uh japan time and the the uh, race is gonna the top 16 is gonna officially start at six uh at two 1400 exactly Thank you all out there, all around the world for staying up late with us or waking up early with us and tuning in for this top 32. It's been a long top 32 battle between these all these drivers out here. Thanks for sticking around guys, really appreciate it. Um, uh, hopefully top 16 will move along a little, you know, Be a little a smoother, better pace. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not worried about, you know, uh, the time myself, but then hopefully we can show you guys more of door-to-door, uh, -door, fender to fender, tire to tire, whatever battle you want to call. Um, for the top 16 so i know it's going to be exciting and you know uh, we're kind of rolling into it slow because of the pace and you know the time taking you know the hits and the one more times and the no one more times are all our fault you know dude why, why you keep doing one more time dude they just can't make their mind up right now but but that's what's what it is being live out here checking it out so thank you all for viewing in if you're out here come say what's up to us we appreciate y'all being out here but yes we'll see you in about an hour for top 16. The brightness called brilliant, blinding and vivid, Valentine.
究極の静かさと安全性オンロードオフロード世界中で活躍するケンダーその信頼を支える静音性安定性と対魔能性世界が認めた技術と信頼を街乗りでは高品質と納得の価格タイヤのポテンシャルをあなたにケンダの世界そこでこそ磨かれる本物があるクスコ伝統と革新オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチオグラレーシングクラッチ ORC 